Let's go, brother. And sink. There we go. Let's go, brother. How did I get here? How did you get here? Well, I don't know how you got here, but I crawled in through the air vents. What's up? I'm G Zuma. Welcome to the I'm Peaking Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, those air vents really got you, bro. Yeah, it's it's, it's musty up. up there. It's still stuck in his lungs. <laughs> you know, I know this is not the right term, but all that salmonella in the vents. I know it's not that. I just don't remember the other term. Sal in the vents. In the vents. <laughs> salmonella in the vents. It's just raw chicken Abestis. floating in the air. Abestus. 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 I have no idea what's happening. We gave it our best shot. We never shot. do. I don't. Anyways. <laughs> anyway. Um. As he said, welcome back to the Peaking Podcast. What's okay. up, bitches? Yeah, who do we got today? Ooh. We have a guy who fucks. He fucks. He fucks. fucks. <laughs> <laughs> if you saw our social clip from December, <laughs> um, we have Grant here with us today. Let's welcome go! To the podcast. Yeah. Dude. Can What's I just point out that this is such a full circle moment? Because it is... Uh, granted, by the time you see this, it will be way past <laughs> granted. Uh, <laughs> uh, <stop>. Granted. Bye. <laughs> Bye. I, I'm so glad that happened. But uh, granted... <laughs> This will be way past our one year anniversary. That was back in August. This will be airing in October. October. So mm -hmm. that being said, still a full circle moment because we did talk about Grant's music plenty of times, plenty of times on this podcast. And yep. I know we purposely did it for two reasons. One, we love his music. And two, Secondly, he fucks. That's it. Okay, three. <laughs> three reasons. Two, he fucks. And three, um, we always want to shout out other, uh, you know, artists yeah like that is that is one of the reasons why we are here doing this podcast other than talking about our community yeah. it is also bringing light to artists that other people don't know about because yeah. like i know there's yeah, a lot bro. of people who don't know who you are so Definitely please not. introduce yourself a little yeah. what kind of music do you would you say that you make uh what's up guys i'm grant I am, uh, <laughs> this, this camera this camera oh, oh yeah, yeah this camera yeah. thank you um what kind of music do i make i make um I would just say melodic electronic music nice. that is not house. That is basically, <laughs> and then it's just like everything in between. So I've, a good way to describe I've it. done yeah. future bass. I've yeah. done melodic bass. I just love that sort of pop element to electronic yeah. music, but I just don't make house music for some reason. And so that that's is why, why I love his music. And that's why he fucks. House hater. Yeah, why is hey, it hey, house? Hey, I didn't <laughs> say kidding. I hate house. I love house. I didn't say I hate house. I just enjoy nah, things that are not house. Okay, but, house, why, but why, but yeah, why specifically, <laughs> why specifically do you not make house music? Like, why is that the first thing that pops up? You're like, oh, I do it, but not house. <laughs> oh, the reason is because when I started making electronic music, uh, I wanted to, I love like sync, I love like syncopated drum rhythms, like kind of hip hop drum rhythms, okay. just like, and now as an adult, I like making house stuff more. I just haven't done it yet, oh. but, um, so house is like grown up music or house. It kind of is. <laughs> it kind of, honestly, Maybe. I could agree because I wasn't a house head. I'm starting to get into hey, it as I like, get older, there you, you go. know, yeah. just with the more slow pace. The original the groove. And cats, the we have the uh, ongoing theory that as you get older, you're, you're, Heart rate, your BPM, all that stuff. Yeah, because I've been fucking with techno with like, too. No, yeah, Bonnie exactly. and Clyde, right. Bonnie and Clyde mentioned I, that. And yeah. we get, you know, as we get older, like so. Uh, this recent weekend, it was my birthday. Oh, happy I turned twenty nine, um, and I, I just, I get tighter. I, I get tired at a festival now. Like two days at a festival, right. it's a lot of. I can't, I can't oh do it anymore, dude. See, the thing is, I can, but I sit down a lot and I just yeah. vibe to the music more. Right. And now I imagine if I didn't headbang at all, I could probably stand instead of sit the entire yeah. time. Um, and just vibe to the music more. Yeah. Um, so that has been a ongoing theory that we have of like, you know, as we get older, we just want to like vibe just, more. Just vibe right. And chill. Yeah. It's funny that you brought up techno because I just know so many people that have listened to electronic music their entire life and like as in a, in their later twenties, they're like, I love techno now, just yeah. like out of nowhere. And I'm like, okay, I love songs that take five minutes to like bring in a hi hat. That's fucking <laughs> sick. No, I'm hey, kidding. I no hate. It's definitely a different. It's definitely a different vibe. Like it's 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 one of those things where I think it's like it's like trying beer or coffee for the first time. Exactly. You know? It's oh, like an yeah. acquired taste that you develop over time. Because I was the same way. <laughs> yeah. I feel like and then I think I think as I started to like kind of appreciate those little changes like more and more I'm like you know it's actually not bad it's you know I bad. think I just need to I think I just need to expose myself to it more like I actually need to go to like a techno show with someone who who knows what they're doing were you yeah. a raver before you became an artist uh, like I sort of this is kind of a funny story actually like my I started making electronic music when I was really really young like 11 and oh, wow. yeah what? like super wow. young you're probably super the awesome. youngest person we've How are you heard now? I'm 26. Okay. So okay, I've been yeah. producing for a long time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I love making electronic music. That's a whole story I can go into. 
Um, but basically, when I like started making electronic music and then started watching these DJs performing, um, and I really wanted to like educate myself or like go to one of these shows. Yeah. And funny enough, my parents agreed. They would kill me if I said this, but they agreed to buy me a fake ID. Nice. Um, nice. And but hey, the yo. caveat, the caveat was it was an eighteen ID, so I obviously couldn't buy alcohol. Uh, okay. And, okay. Uh, okay. But that's that, really that makes, okay. I was about to good. say. I was like. Whoa! Let me just right. parents ever right. or worse parents. Let me just say, like, tell me your parents are supportive without telling me your parents are supportive. Oh, like, holy they're, shit! They're my biggest critics and my biggest supporters. Aww. So yeah, yeah that's they're, dope. They're super dope. That, that's dope. Um, but anyway, so this was probably like, by the way, like I was probably sixteen, not like eleven. And uh, I just remember like going into a couple of these shows. Like maybe it was like a mad decent block party, like mm. back in like twenty sixteen or no way earlier actually mm -hmm. and uh like just i was walking around with one of my older friends and some people were just like looking at me being like damn i thought this was for adults like who is why is this child running around this festival <laughs> hey, and, like but they I'm just shouldn't assume it. they can't assume <laughs> exactly yeah what if you just um, had a baby face i would I, yeah i mean i wish i still did but um <laughs> that would be yeah and um so yeah basically i started going to a couple of these shows like really early in life and they were just so inspiring. Like I remember seeing like Porter Robinson mm, performing nice. his like super early shit, like Amazing. the um, Spitfire. Yep. And like there was Big Room House was like happening at that uh, point. And I would just like remember like my my mom was just sitting up in the grass and like I was just down in the crowd basically by myself and like I was watching everyone's hands go crazy. Oh, so they went with you. Yeah, my mom went Whoa. with me to my very first one. And I remember she told wow. me like people would come up to her and be like, Why are you here? Like not in a mean way, just in like yeah. an almost like inquisitive like of like yeah. you're an older gal here. Yeah, exactly. Um, wow, that's awesome. Music yeah. is so every cool. age guys. Well, so you said you started you started producing at the age of eleven. I did, yeah. And you released on Monster Cat by the time by twenty sixteen, right? Uh, I was, it was 2014. I was 16 years old, and then I put wow. out my first song with Monster Cat. Uh, so what were the first? What was like the first four like years of you learning to produce? What was that like before you actually got that sort of signing? Um, good question. I mean, I started off. I I learned about music really early. Like probably I had a a neighbor, a babysitter, basically. Who his name's Tom Norris. He's now like a mix engineer for like Skrillex and Lady Gaga. Wow. And Zed and like shout out Tom. He's amazing. Um. And he was my next door neighbor, and I think I was probably like eight years old or something, and I would go over to his house, and he'd be making beats on Fruity Loops uh, for this uh, game Step Mania that's like a Dance Dance Revolution ripoff. Whoa. Um, yeah, and so I would just go over to his house, and I thought it was so cool. He tried to teach me how to use Fruity Loops one time, and it was too complicated for my eight-year-old brain. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and then when I was 11, I pirated Fruity Loops, whoa. And... <laughs> I eventually just don't come after him. Kept, I, I started posting my music on Newgrounds, which is this website that still exists. Oh, I know. It's, a, it's a throwback for sure. You could actually probably find some of my music on there from like 2008 under a different name. Sick. Mm -hmm. um, and I think one of the good things about learning to produce that young and that early was like, I didn't care about it being good. Like I didn't care about it making uh, like being successful. Mm -hmm. um, you just did it because you loved it. Exactly. Yeah. And I posted so much, so many terrible songs on there, and like people would just go comment, "This fucking sucks," like, <laughs> and like just stuff like that. Little do they know, it was like an eight-year-old <laughs> making music. Like we've said before, man, hate is a required thing. If you're going into any any industry where you're putting yourself out there, it's a requirement. Nobody was so young. I Imagine. Know. Like, I know. You know yeah. Dude, that's let's so be real sad. here. They probably hate, if they found out he was eight, they'd hate more because that's an eight-year-old doing yeah. something yeah. better than yeah. I can. Yeah. yeah, it makes them feel bad about themselves. So of course they have to make it known. Well, that's actually that's the problem. Problem. It's, yeah. like it's, a, it's a big thing that holds a lot of people back. So it's kind of good, you, like you were saying, that you learned young because you didn't have that kind of ego checking yourself oh, yeah. all the time. But there's a lot of people that get into this stuff later in life and then they stop making stuff because their first eight, ten thousand songs are bad. It's fear. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. so mm -hmm. when you're eight, you don't care. That's not why you're doing <laughs> yeah. it. So. Yeah. You're like, I'm just going to press buttons and mix this. And it's, it's like, I like this. It's pretty. Yeah. <laughs> it's like playing a video game. It's a video yeah. game really with is. like with more engaged almost. Y you know, you don't have to put this video on screen, but I'm thinking of a really funny TikTok video. Of <laughs> Thank like, you for saying that. By <laughs> yeah. Thank you for have, saying that. Just like, put it on screen. You, go find you don't it. have to. It's just, no, it's just <laughs> more editing work. Have you guys seen that TikTok video where there's like a, like he's like, I don't know, 10 years old and he's at his school talent show or whatever the and he's just he's, like DJing super yeah. hard no visuals no nothing but his music's going off and he's just going ham as a little kid on, <laughs> on, on like a <laughs> 
That reminds me of that one kid uh, that's like producing music. He's like also he's like six. Yeah, or he's seven. like six years old. And he's like oh my God. He's, he's literally really like good. using like term like these big terms. He's like now I'm gonna like quadrate this into like oh, quadrate. Dude, he's like, that's like, crazy. Quadrate, yeah, he's like freaking he's... modern Beethoven. Yeah, or some I don't shit. I don't know, but he's like already Mozart. making EDM. He's like recreating <laughs> David Guetta songs yeah. and like all. It's yeah. crazy. I, I, I hate to not hate to say it, but so just because of my uh, uh, background in in what I studied psychology kid probably got like Asperger's or something mm-hmm. like not in a bad mm-hmm. way like he he probably found the thing that he fucking yeah. loves and yeah. it works yeah. and he knows it backwards and probably, forwards but if yeah. you ask him four times twelve no idea yeah yeah yeah, I mean, to, I mean to be totally honest, as like music technology gets better, the bar for entry gets lower and lower. I mean, that's you, get, that's fair, you get that's you get any DAW out of a cereal box, and you get a subscription to Splice or something like that. Yeah. And technically, yeah. you could make an entire song. It might not stand out against other electronic music, <laughs> yeah. but like it's a song. Yeah, you know mm-hmm. I mean, it's yeah, very true. You made song it like, is just sounds put together, right? And it's yeah, like you're, right. if you're playing with a bunch of loops in the same key, you're, it's basically like playing with Legos. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the earlier you start, the more practice you get over time, and then and as soon as you get pyrokinetic machines and kinetics P- pyrotechnic machine in the background you could just like press a button in your bedroom and then light your house on fire yeah. Yeah. Oh, just, yeah. just a bunch of flamethrowers <laughs> it's yeah. cool the reason I say this is because there's already a kid who's doing this like he literally DJs lighting his house on fire no he's a DJ and he has pyro is a different kid in his room wait is this, yeah, a, different oh, this is a different kid oh this is a different kid okay dude some of the talented kids on TikTok kids follow your dreams Nan's on, ki- Nan's on kid talent TikTok. On kid talk, kid talk. <laughs> no, we don't say that. That's weird. No, kid talent. I said that's why I didn't say kid TikTok. I said I'm not kid watching children. TikTok. Let me make this very clear. No, it's not like that. It's like you're watching very talented young artists. Like, just stop. Just I'm trying to help you out here. Just doing the thing. <laughs> Also, also, I realize this is the second time we've done this. We forgot to intro ourselves, and oh, also yeah. we forgot to mention that Bryn is not here today. She's uh, sick. Oh, shit. She's out sick, so yes. we yeah. have Jeezy replacing her. But yes. uh, beow, 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 beow. I'm, I'm Devin. I'm Mickey. I'm, I'm Nand. Oh, I'm Grant. <laughs> and I'm new here. I feel like we should just give him a different name every time because he just finds Gary. Gary. I, I am the Wook of Wisdom. If you didn't, there know. you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. We still gotta go to Wander Woods. Yeah, no, Wander Woods. Is yeah, the whatever thing. happened to that? Well, it's the idea has taken several like changes and shifts. Mm. I mean, okay, so I have this concept for a festival. It's called Wander Woods. It, it's only in my imagination right now, uh, but I'm working on several different ways to <laughs> realize phase. that imagination into ways that you can interact with, whether that be a real, real life thing or not. But uh, yeah, I don't know. No, no announcements yet on that sort of thing. Right now, I'm developing the the G Zoom like space, space, uh, spaceship, space station sort of vibe. Huh. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Script writing is hard. Also, it takes <laughs> forever. <laughs> we're we're. Uh, <laughs> do you got my text about the DJ fans? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah hey, content's uh, hard, guys. Okay, it is. It is hard. It's yeah. a lot of stuff that you got to do. Yeah, you, you were saying that too earlier. You were like, dude, I don't have any oh content God. stuff. I'm yeah, ready for the AI that. that just like generates content for me. <laughs> Bro, there's Honestly. AI influencers. Have you guys seen that? Yeah. Oh, what? Yeah. What yeah. Is that? yeah. There's like actual influencers now who are like totally AI and they look scarily. Scarily? Is that a word? Oh, Freakishly are you talking weird. about like the, weird. Yeah, like the ones that look like they have like a bunch of makeup and they're like standing in front of the camera and they're like. Are they, they look good. They look real. They look real. They do That's look funny. real. That's cool. It's kind of weird. I mean, there are like there are like specks in their face where you kind of could tell that right. they're fake, but like. But yeah. probably, I assume you can tell with the eyes too. Yeah, they're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know that NPC trend that was like that's like happening, been Thank happening you for, the for ice a while. Cream. Oh, are you yeah. familiar with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, bad that I they, still want to do that. They had like, <laughs> they had like <laughs> the, the AI, um, AI like, like influencers <laughs> doing that. Uh. <laughs> crazy that's kind of fun. weird that's kind of fun it's weird man. i want to go to a festival and act like an npc just hand out quests <laughs> be just get so stuck in, dude that's a good video idea just, oh, just, sure. walking, just get stuck just like the issue, walking the issue that i found is that like you're trying to give somebody a side quest at a, an event like they're trying to enjoy the event you don't want to just hijack their time <laughs> <laughs> like, yo go pick up three gum wrappers off the ground. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. Actually, I, I I have an idea already in motion. Okay, I'm really excited for it. Let's have you do heard, it. Like, like it's gonna be sick. It's sure. That's like, is that the one you're? Yes, that's exactly talking what, about with the 52 oh. cards. Oh yeah. Oh oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you gonna keep this idea to yourself? Or are you gonna tell me right now? Uh, not right now. No, not on, right. not, not on camera. It's so secret. Again, <laughs> I have no idea what's happening. These are big moves we make. We had an idea for yeah. a video. Yeah. NBC. We'll talk about it off camera. Sorry guys, you don't get to know. We went on a full on tangent, guys. 
Anyway, sorry. What were we were talking. What were we talking about before? Kid talent. <laughs> Well, so you you released your first single uh, with Monster Cat specifically, right? Yeah. I really, how, how did that How did that work? How did that come about? Uh, that happened because I emailed them a demo to their mm. demo inbox, okay. and it was, it was that. And good. I just remember like I was trying to get I was like trying to take music a bit more seriously. Uh-huh. Um, I kind of just made music for almost like five years as a kid, just not giving a fuck if it was good. And then I won a remix competition, and then I was like, Sweet. "Oh, I can do this! This is crazy!" Sick. Yeah, um, that's crazy. Yeah, and so I still have, I still have like this picture on my wall from like when I won this remix competition. It was for, uh, it was cute. for an MLK song or MLK. I don't know how you say it. Um, and yeah, so, you know. anyways, I remember I heard Wave Racer for the first yes, time. Yes, I fucking love <laughs> Wave Racer. Dude, yeah, he's so sick. So, and I was like, dude, this guy is making the music that I wanted to make yeah. my whole life. I was like, it's 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 like major key, it's fun, it's pop, it's also got like different drum rhythms sounds like and a video stuff. Game. Yeah. It sounds like a video game. Yeah. It's so cool to me and I'm like, this is what and I kind of just I kind of just like ran with the Wave Racer vibe. Um before I was Grant, I went by Grant Bowtie, yeah. um which is yeah. because my last name is Bhutan. Uh, oh. Someone, someone gave me that nickname in middle school. That was school. actually one yeah. of the questions. Yeah, that was one of the questions. They were that like, we "What happened yeah. to bow tie?" Oh yeah. yeah, dude. Okay, so I mean, I I think Grant Bow Tie is an amazing name, but uh, basically, I I ran with the Grant Bow Tie vibe for a while, and um, then I went to college to study music, and I, I I wanted to get a manager, and I wanted to like to become a big artist and like take it really seriously. Yeah. Um. And I remember I made a bunch of demos my freshman year, and I went to Monster Cat again, and they were starting to do this kind of like artist. They wanted to try out do, like developing a, an artist just themselves, and they wanted to take me under their wing. And they're like, "You need a real brand. Like, what is Grant bow tie? Are you gonna start wearing a bow tie? Like, uh, <laughs> and I was like, "No, bow ties are weird. I don't want to do that. Like." Uh, I was taking myself way too seriously. Now I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. I'd roll up in a suit and bow tie. Like, I should bring it back. That would have been a look. Yeah, that I mean, would have been who, a look. Who does that? DJ Hansel? DJ Hansel. Yeah. He always does One the suits. Every time. Yeah, well, Sam yeah. Nitty's been doing doing that Same a lot too. Thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you have a look, you have a look. Yeah. 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 Well, you brought up something interesting. You said that, like, uh, Monster Cat wanted you or was questioning whether or not you were going to wear a bow tie and stuff like that. And at the time, you were taking music and your career and all that stuff very seriously. What's, right. Is there an attitude change now? Uh, now because of kind of where I am in my overall life, uh, not only doing electronic music, electronic music is just a fun, the arts project is just a fun aspect of my life now that is an outlet for me to, uh, basically do whatever I want. Mm-hmm. Um, I am taking it l- like a little bit less seriously, mm-hmm. but also I'm kind of just waiting until I have a package of music or a couple songs that like feel good together and then maybe i'll go back into like oh shit we gotta do this right we gotta get like everything perfect and mm. that would also that'd probably be pretty good for me honestly i've always i'm like super i'm just like the embodiment of decision fatigue and not really knowing what to do. <laughs> so like your music isn't like yeah. the only music that you make uh, like no. grant isn't just you i mean grant's you but you don't you make music yeah. for other people oh too. yeah you were mentioning this yeah. earlier yeah so uh i did uh electronic music for super long time just doing that Mm -hmm. and then i but now i'm really into like writing behind the scenes for pop artists and k-pop and j-pop and Mm. got lots of cool stuff which 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 k-pop are we allowed to know which k-pop i mean uh i just did the uh the tomorrow x together uh featuring jonas brothers song that was really big no big deal that's big (laughs) yo uh and basically, the thing that happened uh, was over COVID, I was I just graduated from college. I was just sitting in my bedroom every single day, not knowing what to do with myself. Like Monster Cat royalties were kind of paying my bills. So I didn't really have this like extreme like pressure to go out and like, you yeah. know, make tons of money. I was just kind of like waking up every day. And it, at the point in my life where if I just went to bed and did nothing and no one was going to yell at me, like there weren't any teachers in my life or my mm-hmm. parents weren't in my life. And I was just like, it was a weird time. And then COVID hit. Like right after, you're like, um, what the fuck do I do? I'm just like, what do I do? I'm, I'm just in this, I was in like the shittiest apartment ever, and like just in a dungeon basically. Um, so I got into my manager started kind of putting me in more writing sessions with like pop songwriters, and we just wrote yeah. a ton, we wrote like a million terrible songs that I still have <laughs> just sitting on hard drive somewhere. Um, 
And over the last couple of years, it's just kind of snowballed. I signed a publishing deal. And now I'm co-signed with this guy Ryan Tedder, who's uh, the lead singer. Oh, of you know Public. Ryan Tedder. Yeah, he's a he's a he's really dope. And yeah. I, he's everywhere. He's, he's everywhere. Yeah. Let's get um, shout out Ryan Tedder for being amazing. Wow. Um, but yeah, he's just been super super great. Uh, it's it's fairly new. We've just been working together on a bunch of stuff that I'm really excited to announce one day when it comes out. Yeah. Um, but yeah. You yeah. mentioned K-pop. Which which K-pop bands did you write for? Uh, so aside from Tomorrow X Together, I did the, uh, I did a song for Shiny, which is really cool. That just came out. If you guys didn't know, prior to me being obsessed with EDM, I was a very, very heavy K-pop girl. So Shiny, Ooh. I grew up with. I'm, that's awesome. Oh. Yeah. And I've got a couple songs on hold with like NCT 127. Oh, um, they're, they're on the new site. Whoa. Yeah. But yeah i some of these songs are kind of just like they we thought they were gonna come out and now we're not sure now like maybe they will i'm yeah. just the music industry uh outside of the electronic music industry uh in this pop lane is just the slowest shit show they have ever. you on a chokehold interesting yeah it just takes forever for things to happen yeah i could totally see you doing um some like producing for have you heard of xg <laughs> oh yeah, it. I was sitting here thinking, when's he gonna bring up yep. XG? Dude, yeah. yeah, I love XG. XG is amazing. Brit and I like are we're like total fan fanboy fan girls. XG? Oh, I'm the trying to get K-pop that XG group. cut. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You you weren't you weren't here, but we uh, when we had Roman Silver on, we listened mm. to um, that was when they came out with their second cipher rap cipher, where they just rapped over a bunch of like Jid Jid and J Cole tracks, and they're so talented. They're so wow. good. Yeah, so I remember cool. those. I will agree because I I, I I was completely uninterested and then Devin showed me and I'm like, wow, these are like five, six. How many of them? Dude, K-pop's on There was like seven or eight. They, but they, Regardless, they, my point before you let me forget because yeah. I'm going to forget if you, if you cut me off right now. <laughs> Sorry. Um, they're all like teenagers. They're super young and they're all super talented and they all speak different languages. Yeah. That's cool. It's not Dude, just K-pop, like Korean like, pop only. They K-pop's also have like Japanese in there. They also have... Yeah, that's all I can think of in this moment. Uh, well, it's cool. It's cool because they and literally they rap it too. They rotate through like all three, like like so they'll rap in Korean, Japanese, and yeah, it's like um, a whole English, cipher. So you, they which like is super yeah. cool, mm-hmm. you know. So I don't know if you've seen their ciphers, but no, I, I've I've listened to other band ciphers back then. Mm, yeah, I was in, yeah. I was into K-pop like in middle school and high school. But it's interesting because like they're so the ciphers are like that's like whoever is doing their marketing. I mean, I know K-pop has good marketing mm-hmm. behind oh, yeah. like generally speaking this is why the k-pop industry mm-hmm. is so big right yeah but like um whoever's doing their marketing is like really nailing it because so they have their ciphers right they have like the rap the rap videos and stuff on youtube that builds hype like hype and it gets a lot of the hip-hop community like really right. you know like it gets a lot of buzz yep. uh going with them but then you go to their music and their music is very like traditional k-pop very like poppy fun but i just i i just noticed that when i was like watching their music videos you just like i, I couldn't look away like right. i'm just their like music dude videos they're so are a whole like class fucking production they, they're, they're, the production's super high it's crazy. the songs so are really good. catchy and like they, they all just dance they're well. all yeah they're all good dancers i mean they trained for like yeah, they, they're, they, they have a documentary years. coming out soon i think really? uh yeah like uh, uh on just their i think like their seven year journey or something because wow yeah they take a whole selection of girls and then they like whittle it down to like you know seven or eight some of them train for 10 years and they don't even yeah make and it. they don't even make it oh, so sad. Yeah. yeah i i i for sure at one point want to have like a full episode about just korean pop because like i've i've been hearing and doing my own research about korean k-pop oh, in general for I got the last you. couple of years right and i think i think it's actually really interesting don't get me wrong it's really shitty it's I, really really shitty but it's really interesting and i feel like a lot of people would want to know about it like to train your whole life for something that you may not even get. i'm not into like the new generation i was like in the second generation of k-pop mm. You said so. it was like a farm system. They just have like tryouts for it's K-pop. A training no, system. so it's it's basically it's a tryout system. They and audition then, first, and then uh, once you pass the auditions, you get into the training program. And it's hard. And then like training. You, you train mm-hmm. like day and night like for twelve years. hours a day. Like and you, then sometimes you don't even make it. You know how here in America uh. with talent, there's like people say things like the triple threat. If you can sing, you can dance, and you can uh, act. You're mm-hmm. already good. You're golden. Over there, that's not enough. It's required. That's yeah. not enough. All that is the bare minimum. Right. 
and uh-huh. like they're also really skinny because they're barely eating like they they control your food they also make you get plastic surgery oh yeah at it's like required. a really young age Fun. i know i know That's extra crazy. they had to because i have a friend who uh works in the uh, dance industry and he uh, his friend is one of their like uh xg's like main uh producers or whatever and he was like oh yeah uh my friend so-and-so was like there while so-and-so on xg was like getting her like face done or something that's insane. They're like 16 because they wow. have a they yeah. have a quote 15, unquote 16. standard yeah like like it's nuts because at the end of the day and this is what what's really really sad about it from my research um it's not about them it's not about them oh, at the no. end of the day it is about the the company it's like it's like you know in a way like pharmaceutical companies like in a big yeah, overarching no. right. company controlling this group the girls don't matter xg matters that's it yep it's very cutthroat yeah. it's tough <laughs> Um, one thing that I think is really cool about XG though that I heard is that they're one of the first like girl groups to really pop off in America first. Like they mm-hmm. didn't. Uh, I don't yeah. know. I think this That's is true. true hopefully, uh, but they yeah they're popping off in America more than I mean before they've popped off in Korea or anywhere else. Yeah. So I think that's just really. Fu- I think that's so sick. Yeah. Like, yeah. At least you know. I think well, they just the marketing team. The-, the marketing team is really really smart because the thing yeah. is they they just showed up out of nowhere. It's because the marketing team knew exactly what they were doing. And they trained and p- prepared these girls to be exactly what they wanted. Right. Yeah. Boom. America so shows up. Talking about that, like kind of cultural conditioning that you guys are talking about, you had the opportunity to work with both K-pop artists and American artists. Do you notice any difference when you do that sort of thing? Yeah. I mean, American artists, I can actually work in the room with, mm, okay. uh, which yeah. sounds really obvious, but yeah. I would, I, well, I think the reason I bring that up is because in Korean pop, there's obviously this overarching business aspect to it. Mm-hmm. Like the artists themselves might not be writing the songs and right. uh, the company picks the songs. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> we're literally just sending them songs yeah. and hoping for the best. And then they would have to translate it into yeah. Korean. There are like only a, as a songwriter who's not an artist, like you're just a songwriter or just a producer. Um, there are only a few lanes that really take songs from the outside because like a lot of American artists write their own songs right Mm -hmm. Uh, but dance music like house DJs and stuff and Asia pop are like the two like strongholds of like pitch music so um, but anyways I mean K-pop I love making because it's like as an EDM producer, yeah, I it's get to, fun. It's fun. I get to add all the bells and whistles and like make the drums hit super hard. Yeah. And like every there's like there's kind of a craft to K-pop. It's like the uh, the pre core at least previously there was. I think it might be changing now, but like it was like the pre chorus. It goes from this beat to a pre chorus with like yeah. lush chords, and then it goes to oh. a drop sort yeah, of chorus. That is why my transition from K-pop to EDM was so smooth because K-pop mm. incorporates so much of electronic music elements. I can, yeah, yeah, I can see that. I can yeah. see that. I feel like. All the people that I'm uh, I'm thinking about right now who enjoy K-pop heavily, they they've transitioned to EDM music as of late. Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've also been just hearing a lot of like um, just EDM crossover in uh, K-pop recently. Like, yeah. I think I, I think I heard. Uh, uh, do you know the song Super Shy by New Jeans? I love that song. Yeah. I love that like, song. I'm obsessed I, I was with like, that song. Yeah, I'm like, this is like drum and bass vibe, but like just really chill, like cute. Very reminds me of Draftage. Um, oh, dude. Like, yeah, it does. Yeah. I really hope that I think New Jeans, the album they just put out within the realm of K-pop is fairly forward thinking. It feels kind of like Gen Z, yeah. Pink Panther's vibe. Uh, <laughs> and I'm, I really I, I love making that stuff. So I hope that more K-pop Hell, yeah. groups kind of keep moving in that direction. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. That song, uh, I, I've had it on repeat recently. Super it's dry? really good, yeah. So good. And a lot of people, I remember when didn't I posted it they play it a Hard Summer? Somebody did. I wouldn't be surprised if someone did. I, just, I remember watching I don't, it. I don't think, I don't think it Hard Summer. I'm 100% certain. Only reason is because I left to go to the bathroom at that time. And I remember walking to the bathroom and just seeing it's it play. It's the same I'm thing like, that happened with that one song. Like, I'm feeling lonely. That too. That also played. That I just can't <laughs> see Hard Summer playing. No, no, Super it was, shy. It was like it a was 21. 21 played that. Maybe it was like a trap remix or something. I can guarantee you it was like a remix. Like it remixed yeah, oh, into like, like, like some, a trap okay. remix Because I'm pretty sure it was ISOXO. Okay, no, someone I needs to make a hardcore drum and bass remix to that song. That would be sick. That would be so sick. Everyone just wants a drum and bass remix of anything, bro. <laughs> I, mean, to be honest, yeah. I mean it is already kind of drum and bass it's a drum and bass uh, like the beat is the same okay. it's the same BPM he yeah. wants it harder drum bass. Yeah. just want the drums just want it to smack harder yeah exactly Ooh, yeah. I, have a, I have a question that we, we like to ask our artists all the time sure uh, how do you feel what do you think the uh, uh, genre of music 
that everything is going toward right now. Like, what was the golden era? Mm -hmm. golden. The golden era is progressive house. Yeah. Oh, the golden era of electronic music. Yeah. Like, Future okay. Bass, golden era. Like, that was, like, what, 2016 Ooh. to 2018? God, well, Future, a... yeah, Future Bass was, like, 2015, 16. It's like, progressive. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. So, as of right now, what do you think it is? In the, in the year of, let's say, 2022, 2023, moving into 2024. What is the genre? What is the primary genre of choice? Yeah. Okay. Um... I really, I mean, I think with TikTok music culture and just the way I'm seeing things moving right now, everything's getting faster. Like there's like speed house and mm -hmm. like drum and bass, of course. And like, dude, I'm getting like recommendations on my YouTube every day for like these weird like PS2 jungle breakbeat mixes and things. And like, I just think all these like, like subgesium covers. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think uh, talks about jungle stuff a lot. <clears throat> Who me? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I think you're you're hitting on a on a good point. Things are getting faster. Yeah, yeah. I think that's for sure going to be the next thing. I hope I'm right. Like, cause I love that Me stuff. Too. Hard style would be crazy. I don't know about hard style, but drum and don't bass. Don't hate. See, I'm not hating. hating. I'm just. It's I just not hate. It's not hate. It's I just people. Hard style is fun, but you get tired. Like yeah. that's a lot. If you a real one. I think you can't hate. <laughs> no, then we all you can't hate. Me. No, you, you need, but you need like you need a genre like drum and bass to kind of fill that gap first before people start visiting something even faster or drum even and more bass hardcore. needs to get popular in the U.S. first, bro. We I got, think it is. It's, right? it's, it's like starting. I think it's it is. starting. We got yeah. Apocalypse Fest coming up in November, and that is our first drum and bass dubstep festival. Yeah. It Damn. is. But it was it was so. F oh, sorry. Go ahead. Because usually when Project Z was it was hardstyle and uh, dubstep, and now mm -hmm. it's drum and bass. Yeah, Thinking. for the longest time, like, because it, it was funny, I had this conversation with um, a virtual riot, like maybe like a year ago. Oh, no. uh, we were on like set for a, one of our friends' shoots, and I was talking to him about drum and bass, and I was just like, "Yeah, I'm like, I feel like, because we, we were just geeking out over it, because like no one else really on set like likes that. Everyone's like right. on sets like bass heavy, right? But like we were just geeking, out, we were just geeking out over it, and uh, I was like, dude, I feel like it's starting to move in that direction, like the scene is, and he's like. Dude, the amount of times I've heard someone say that and it never does right. is like so yeah, funny. But now I finally feel like it is. I feel like it actually is. I feel more people are talking about like Reaper or like Dimension. Yeah, or like, yeah. That's super I valid. Mean, Dimension at EDC and Net Sub Focus. Netsky. Well, Netsky. 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 was so good. Netsky was oh, yeah. so good. So, yeah, like, um, I've throughout my time in the EDM scene, I've noticed that there's always those two kind of pockets of tempo mostly mm -hmm. yeah so it's like we show up here we're talking about how house is for old people or whatever <laughs> yeah. and bass music is for young no, heavy, but, but aggressive if crowd. you actually think about it too based on tiktok like house has been a thing for gen z as well mm -hmm. right. like it's well that's like, that's kind of what i'm saying is yeah. like there's there's always it seems like to be two crews other mm -hmm. than like you know maybe the side trance people that are yeah. Kind yeah. Of in their own world or, yeah but like the, that that the idea of house versus dubstep it's it's a, been a big one for me at least it's as i'm making a, content it's been a war but now it feels like it's people. shifting it's, so it's like funny. those those two genres the fast and the slow the dubstep yeah. and the house yeah. are being kind of swapped for yeah. you know dubstep is becoming drum and bass mm -hmm. yep uh and then house is becoming techno right yeah. which is yeah. right yeah. So at least in the wow, american that's at least, interesting. No, at, least in that. the, at least in the american scene like yeah. I, I don't yeah. know much about what's going on over in europe but like Dude, right here that's what seems to be happening from what i've seen i'm not talking about all europeans but a lot of europeans are saying that we're slow yeah when it comes to totally, like totally. yeah because they're like we fuck with drum and bass you guys are so fucking slow like yeah, it's like whatever. sorry <laughs> get over it <laughs> and, then, yeah. and, they think, and then they also think that like we're late because they were into dubstep and they're like you guys just like dubstep now your dubstep's trash <laughs> yeah we get it you you guys you guys think you're cool it's it's all right okay yeah, it's like, i'm just okay, kidding we get it europe's been around longer they've been doing things a lot sooner than <laughs> yeah, like surprise surprise it's kind of true like, actually got, america's kind of an old america, like a very new country america though. got house though you guys got house, castles and house shit <laughs> <laughs> we don't have any castles bro <laughs> yeah, we ain't got no castles <laughs> was it house discovered in chicago I don't know the yes. answer to that. Yes. Yes. We got house. It started in Chicago. You're late, yeah. man. Because it, it stemmed from... Techno was, techno was you know created why? in Detroit, but it got popular in Berlin. Yeah. yeah. You wow. want to know why? It's because here we started off with making houses. Over there, they had castles to begin with. <laughs> Stop. Brave dad moment. <laughs> Castles, bro. Send me some castles. Or can we make Devin castles? one and one with dad jokes today? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I was working with this artist um, earlier this year, Bipolar Sunshine. Oh, and, I love uh, He's super nice, super yeah. nice guy. Um, and uh, he told me something. It was I, I will never be able to say it the way he did, but it's like I, th 
he's like in the UK they come up with the cool shit and America always commercializes hell it. yeah so yeah. no that makes sense that, no, the, that I, is the unfortunate truth yeah so I, I mean I, so it's like you know we commercialize everything but right. that's not necessarily the people that are creating the thing yeah it's the people that want to make money off of the yeah. thing right. yeah yeah it's how everything goes the suits here. yeah it's hard to get any it's hard to motivate yourself to do anything here if there's money if, there's no, if money is involved yeah. it's yeah. true money runs the world yeah it's kind of thing. It's like if you want to spend your time doing something you like or are inspired to do, you need to make some money doing yeah. it. Yeah, right. Otherwise, someone, the rest of work life is just going to swallow you. As someone told me recently, money is like blood. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, Jay. It's like energy. Behind the camera. <laughs> oh, God. Jay and I had a two-hour <laughs> conversation yesterday about this. So, What a cheery, a cheery quote. Yeah. <laughs> money is like blood. <laughs> <laughs> then what is a mitochondria? Uh, power powerhouse of the, of, of, the cell. of the cell of the stack of the <laughs> stack <laughs> I mean I was I was gonna go with like I don't know like a quarter but that's cool too yeah, that quarter works. cause does a quarter money, power money money is blood okay never mind <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Anyways, you know what? Why don't we listen to some music? Some new music that I that I heard you got going sure, on yeah, right I mean, now. Heard you got going on. Yeah, I've got some new songs. Got some going on on the beats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, let's so hear it, partner. Nothing's finished. It's all oh, rough. It's like these are all just like rough ideas. Um, we that's even blue, better. We, so, we got him blue balled. Like people just stop oh, really? in the middle. So it's not, like, so it's okay. not mixed, not mastered as, as non mixed. It's raw. <laughs> okay. Not okay. mastered. That's our. That, that's our. We were talking to Ray. Ray about this we were just like that's like the ultimate insult i feel like it's like after after like you know you show a friend your track right and they're like that's really cool is this mastered all the way is, oh it, is it mastered God. yet like it's good. or no good. like it is mixed and mastered and someone goes i can't wait until hear it yeah. when it's yeah, mixed dude. that's like the you biggest fuck it, you oh. that's the yeah. biggest fuck you right, so like, fuck every, you. Time, every time you show your song to anybody it's not mastered yet just yeah don't worry. that's oh, good this is this fucks oh it was mastered <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah honestly <laughs> yeah just i'm just disclaimer city every time i play anything um okay so anyways this song is called lush i Te name temper might be temporary name my concept for this song was i wanted to sound like i sampled a song yeah. okay. but i wanted to make the sample first nice. oh. uh so i made it at a slower tempo and it's like it was kind of like this retro corny 80s vibe and then i sped it up to tr proper drum and bass tempo <gasps> and did like a whole like edm opera like every section's crazy and honestly still figuring it out it kind of falls apart towards the end like mixing organization wise but yeah i hope okay, you like we'll it. it make I sure just, it's turned uh, up just, all the way i just want to put a pin on that that term edm opera i don't know why that sounds awesome in my brain but i want to hear, <laughs> hear more about thank it thank you dropbox <laughs> right. um edm opera here we go let's, let's go Wave racer immediately. <laughs> oh, the harmonies. This is what we like played at the end of an anime, the credits. <laughs> 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 Whoa! 
does. <laughs> oh. Time for the corny outro. Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay. You know, with this, I could imagine Bruno Mars. Woo. Yeah. I love that. My professors in college, when I studied music, said never do a fade out. Yeah. So I did a fade out. Yeah! yeah. Fuck you, professors! Yeah. Dude, that's an 80s you. music video and outro right there. Good old lazy fade out. We Thank love you. that. Well, Thank what's, you. What college did you go to, by the way? I went to USC. Oh! USC? oh. Uh, yeah, we were the first like ever class of music production majors. They just started the program. That's awesome. And like, low-key, they were figuring it out. I don't think they really knew what to do with us, but it was still cool. I could talk forever about is music school worth it? Is it not? So like, it's just yeah. you. You went to school with uh, Robbie Robbie Haldren then, huh? Yeah, yeah dude. We were in child. the same uh, same freshman dorm. I remember hanging Whoa, out with him. Oh, so me a little, funny! He showed me a little DJing back in the day. I haven't Ooh. talked to him in a while, but yeah, Robbie Haldren from uh, Louis the Child. Oh, he's half of Louis yeah. the Child. Fun fact: saw Louis the Child last Dude, weekend. no, I remember. Amazing. When, I, when I was a fr- when I was like a freshman in college, I'm like, oh, I'm sick. I'm a sick EDM artist. I'm a sick <laughs> DJ. So yeah. cool. And then Robbie showed up, and he was like actually really sick, and I was like, ah. Oh, <laughs> Oh, oh, like, never oh, mind. <laughs> no, yeah, those two are super talented. He actually uh, is in the same frat that I was in, just uh, at USC. Yeah, uh, he was in Teak, and so yeah. he came when he came to play. Um, he came to perform at our Sun God Festival at UCSD, Ooh. and so we we all hit him up and we were like, "Hey, you want to like hang out with us like a little bit after after your set?" So he hung out with us for a little bit. We it's saw him awesome. at his booth. Yeah, he's, he's super cool. chill. He's he a super cool. nice guy. He's super chill. You said for that song that uh, you just showed him. What was it called again? Lush. 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 A working title. <laughs> Yeah. Working title working might title. end up being that because it's been like that for over a year now, and I just like it just I don't know. Point. If you guys have any song title recommendations for that one, let me Mario know. I just want to say I fucking miss sets like that so much at music festivals because yeah, well. that I mean again like just immediately when you started playing it, I I see the Wave Racer comparison, you know, yeah. and I remember seeing Wave Racer um, at my first rave ever, which was Hard oh, Summer in 2014. Oh, sure. Yeah, my big my my big bro actually uh, was super into him and he showed me and we went to his set and I was like, dude, what the fuck? This oh, is yeah. like the fucking coolest music I've ever heard and I was obsessed immediately. And so I feel like that uh, there aren't sets like that anymore no. that right. get played. And it's I either, really wish that there were. It's either house or dumb stuff now or trap. Or yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, we're I'm, I'm kind of not hating on the trap. I, I really oh, enjoy trap. I love trap. Oh, yeah. I, trap is making a comeback if anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Of ISO. Yeah. yeah. ISO and Noctu. Yeah. But yeah. like, I just saw Porter last weekend or two weekends ago, a couple weekends ago. Uh, he played at the Bellwether in LA, and I'm like, that is someone who kind of gives you that wave racer fix, like yeah. the colorful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, he's a lot. Sport Port is a bit more like ethereal, spiritual feeling. Out of like, this world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wave racer is just like pure fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I totally feel you. I miss I miss that kind of like sparkly, fun, bubbly, mm. like yeah, kind of. Just electronic music like yeah kid. well the industry is re- is responding to what's commercial yeah, yeah. right so they're yeah. just gonna they're gonna book what they think is popular at the time yeah. you know they're not necessarily in the crowd yeah. bring it back please book grant for shows and go. festivals yeah. for shows, for shows. Uh, yeah. yeah well grant i want to ask you specifically about that song you said that you wanted to sample yourself right yes. and there are vocals in there yes is that you that's all me uh, another I fun fact i that. just i just remembered about that song I was so sick when I made it. Oh, I was, okay. I had like the flu for like a week straight and video, no one, and it was peak COVID too. So like my roommates mm-hmm. were avoiding me, like nobody, I was oh, just stuck damn. in my room mm-hmm. for four days straight and like video Awful. games got boring, like I had nothing to do. And it was almost like the weird like dopamine detox concept where just like you have nothing fun and stimulating around you. So then yeah. I sat down to make that song and like all I did for like 12 hours a day for like four days straight was just work on that song and just like, I'm ex- I'm scared to open up the project file and finish it again because I'm sure yeah. it's just a disaster. I'm sure. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's always how it goes. We're trying to see you have all the samples or all the plugins still from four years ago. Oh God. I still like the harmonies though. I was Thank fucking yeah. the harmonies. No, I was vibing to that. That was that was really sick. I hope. I hope, do. You, do you think? Do you know like when? Like an idea of when you might release that or? Um. Hopefully this year. Uh. Hopefully by the end of the year. Honestly, maybe. I don't know, man. I'm pretty slow at things, but uh, I would say hopefully end of the year. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's funny you mentioned uh, getting like your fix of of like that colorful sounding music because like for, I'd say for me and Nand like that's you. <laughs> that's, oh, yeah. been, that's been you like for us. You know, I gotta get my I gotta get my like fix of uh, future bass, colorful, very yeah. happy yeah. sounding music. My my latest music uh, guilty pleasure is listening to city pop, like the old oh. se- like seventies eighties Japanese uh, like disco music, and uh. so like that kind of inspired that song too. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to make something that sounded kind of like corny. Yeah, and, like, but on purpose, you know. Do and you like, fun. Do you like the midnight? Uh, Do you I don't listen know. to them at night? No, you should know. check them out. Okay. They're a very 80s vibe. Very 80, they use a saxophone a lot of times. There's oh, a song called uh, Jason. Highly recommend. Okay. I think you'd like it. Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to write that down. That's sick. Two, yeah. two, two thoughts, just because I don't want to forget them. Saxophone. Oh, God, I love the saxophone. Chris. 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 Chris is amazing. Chris just, is no, sick. but you know who also did a saxophone in their set? <laughs> I went to Vegas at EBC, and I saw two friends. They brought a saxophone <clears throat> player. Mm. I was like, that's pretty sick. At a pool party. Second thought before I forget, and then we can continue on that thought. Um, <laughs> uh, Radwimps. I, I feel like I've brought up Radwimps, uh, Radwimps a couple times. That? Uh, that is a Japanese pop oh. band that I'm just in love with. When I need like really happy, Ooh. happy, happy, <clears throat> like, like uh, it's just so good. It's it's there's a there's a movie series that's like they, they work with a lot. Um, it's it's I've mentioned it Radwimps before. Yeah, like, no, I, yeah, you you mentioned. I think you mentioned it. I'm gonna have to write these down. Yeah, yeah. Have you, um, Grant? Do you do you watch any anime at all? <laughs> Huge anime fan. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Okay, do you watch Jujutsu Kaisen? Do you watch yeah. One Piece? Dude, that not One Piece. That, that's the one I don't watch. That song that you just played for us, <laughs> no I could see that being the outro for Let's like go. a Jujutsu Kai, like for the, for a whole arc. <laughs> this is like, part of the episode that. where I keep quiet because I know nothing about anime. Oh yeah, wait. Uh. Speaking of which, I wanted to mention to you, uh, Bryn and Sean are gonna make it a point to watch Demon Slayer so that they, we can talk about it. And I think that, that is awesome for them. I think that. Let's go. <laughs> Excuse me. She said no without saying no. I think that you two should tr- give it a try. I think you guys should give it a try. All you I'm should. hearing, all I'm hearing, is the fact that you say no means I don't want to hear a good story. Yeah. <laughs> Can you guys please like put okay, in the comments okay. in like, my defense, for if them I, to if, watch it? If I get into a show, I won't get anything done. In my defense, Facts. I'm the same way, and you notice that I have nothing done yet. I've watched the anime. I, I, I can't <laughs> That's do that. Not an excuse. No. I, okay. I, I have a solution for you because this is. I, I run into the same thing as I'm telling as you, you guys know. I am I'm always editing you. or doing something, and I'm all, I'm always busy. My schedule yeah, is literally Devin, packed. Watching things in times. English doesn't always work for everybody. Okay. Mm. I'm just saying, if you really want to watch it and you appreciate the story, <laughs> okay. I know. A lot, I'm gonna get a lot of. I'm gonna get a lot of flack for this. All right. But the dub, the dubs these days are actually pretty good and if wow. you watch the dub and I, I, this is what i do i watch it in the background so i'll like be washing the dishes i'll be right eating now, i get i have a very very short attention span and if like i try to do something while i'm multitasking and watching i'm gonna watch i'm not gonna get my shit done <laughs> that's fair. i actually i actually agree with that that's why the english so you have adhd yeah <laughs> I, no i'm serious that, that's actually not adhd at all what what would you okay then what, what would you it? say that is that it, being able to focus on uh, like she just wants to pay attention OCD? to OCD. Sh- That's not OCD either. So that well, because so I mean I, I'm able to because it's in English I can like listen oh, I and can. watch it and still do like tasks that I don't re- that don't require any like further thinking like washing the dishes or eating. I can't do know? that because then my mind when I'm washing dishes I'm like it goes into the dishes and then I I just zone I zone everything <laughs> it goes out. Into right. the and then, <laughs> then that's a, that's, the that's, a, that's actually fair <laughs> because like uh so I mean uh, just brain things um there's t- uh, there's there's a uh, uh, motor motor control a and motor control b let's put it like that yeah. that's the simplest way i can put it uh. things take focus to learn how to do and then they become automatic like driving a car think about all the things you have to do to drive a car at first when you first learn that, to drive a car yeah you have to do each one individually and you think you can't even listen to music at the same time yeah. now you can do it like it's breathing and yeah. you can listen to music at the same time for some people they never get past that first motor cortex for certain mm. things so for example like mickey is pointing out listening to an uh listening to a tv show while doing the dishes she wants to focus on actually paying attention to the story so it's not subconscious thought of i'm listening to the story because then, then like the new episode the another episode plays and i'm like wait what happened in the other one like mm-hmm. i've lost now I'm you, might, you might be able to you might be able to flip it and be like oh well shouldn't the doing the dishes be automated for some people like myself i actually really enjoy That's doing fair. the dishes uh for me it's a meditative state mm-hmm. like like this is it's my like with me and makeup it's like it's, it's my it's time like, to like check out yeah. and just like you know i'm washing this dish so i can be mindful of what's happening in my body in this moment so if i'm trying to pay attention to something else i'll stop and not mm-hmm. be not doing the dishes yeah well, the right. episodes are only 30 minutes long <laughs> 
He's it's really, he's really trying to get rid of it. I also feel like there, there are a few animes that like it doesn't matter if you like anime. Yeah. They are good. Yes. Objectively. Yes. Good. I watched Death 100% Note. Hundred percent agree. Death yeah, Note's good. So you, so I, you I, know I, that like they, uh, they but, can be good. But yes, but then I just only wanted to watch Death Note. That's uh, all yeah. I wanted but, to do. But what yeah. about you your other it? shows? Yeah. Don't you watch other shows and those are like hour All the shows that long? I all the shows that I watch now, they're not in season. So I'm just like But what so about what when you, they are in so season? So what you're saying is you have free time to watch a show. <laughs> yeah. But an hour of the day because they come out every week. Cool, then just watch cool. one you, hour a day. You can fit Christ. two episodes. You can fit two anime episodes <laughs> in in that hour. Honestly, and if you do it right and use the correct website, some websites they remove the intro outro and yeah, Crunchyroll has the skip I'm intro feature. I'm currently not even in like a show phase. I'm, We're in, just a, trying I, I'm so in a book hard. phase right now. Dude, this whole episode is an anime episode now. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in my book it's like era the right now. There's light yeah. novels for <laughs> these animes. <laughs> I'm telling you, Mickey, you're missing out on an entire like. Let me miss out. You're, no, you're, I'm, let me let me backtrack. <laughs> what what is your favorite anime currently, if I may ask? Currently, um, dang, that is like, like of re- like that's airing in the last couple of years, kind of thing, or just like of all time. Both. Give me two answers. Oh God, um, this is one of those super open ended questions. Uh, my <laughs> my favorite of all time is Cowboy Bebop. Nice. nice. Um, that is a good one. That is a very good I one. It's so that, good. Actually. It's it feels it feels like I feel like the '90s anime is my favorite. Like Berserk and like they just feel way more a little bit more mature, a little bit more serious and deep. Yeah. Um, yes. Yes. I do um, agree because a lot of the animes today they're great, great storylines. Great. But they're very sure. kid kid friendly and yeah. like like. Because, I mean, obviously now the anime has taken a big step in American culture as well. Right. Um, they're gearing it more towards... Um, yeah. They're very flashy. Yes. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. My nine-year-old little brother is like into anime. Is that Let's why go. you don't want to watch it? Because you no. don't want to say that's <laughs> your nine-year-old <laughs> brother. But uh, to continue, <laughs> on, continue on, what would um, you say is your current... <laughs> Like my today. current one oh. god this is so hard because like i literally just am like watching whatever is showing on any season at this point but yeah. like um demon slayer has been amazing of yeah, course, demon slayer. Of course. Um, yeah phenomenal like i want to come up with like a cool answer that like some of you might not think of but like i don't know like don't say it what were you gonna say <laughs> black clover oh my god dude my, i i really slept on black clover i thought it was so so dumb when i first watched no, it. it it is be, but once you get like fifth, like past episode fifteen, yeah, it just gets better and better and better. And the final, um, like the final, the finale of like the arc, right. the first arc, is phenomenal. And then everything after that is like chef's kiss. So I started on episode one, thought it was so stupid, never watched it again. My girlfriend kept watching it. <laughs> I tagged in it like episode thirty, and then I'm You're like, like, oh Whoa. shit. Is not an annoying little fuck anymore. Yeah, and I was like, like, I was like in denial. I was like, I don't like this show. This is show. I got one. Well, yeah, keep going, mean, keep going. Uh, yeah, yeah e- easy because the, uh, they make Asta so annoying in the beginning. He's so annoying, you know. So yeah, screaming constantly. Exactly. But then later, you're like, wow, this kid's actually inspiring yeah. as fuck. He don't got any powers, and he's yeah. just like, he just does it. One modern anime that came to mind though, for some reason, even though it's not that new anymore, was ReZero. Just because it's like, if you guys mm. seen ReZero, it's like just one of those like strangely paced like there are a couple episodes where it's just like character building and then something crazy happens mm-hmm. it's just very unpredictable it's really deep and fucked up and cool and i don't know that's that's i haven't watched Re-Zero. i should watch I'll have to check that out super good okay so is the fact that you are a big fan of anime is that the reason you make k-pop stuff like did was that an intention of yours oh good question uh honestly no not really like that's k-pop was kind of just something that i fell into to be honest like um just because when I started writing behind the scenes and I started enjoying collaborating with people and writing these songs that basically were not with an artist. We just wrote a song and we needed to figure out where that can go so we can make a little money. And K-pop was one of those realms. I actually got my first K-pop cuts that did not come out, but I got them cut and I Uh got paid a producer fee for them. Uh Uh, and I got that before I even had a, like a real American cut. Whoa! Wow. Yeah, so I was like, "Damn, this K-pop thing's working. I should keep doing this." <laughs> yeah, right. damn, that's like almost like your roots then. Kind of, yeah. Way, yeah. Honestly, I still like 
love watching it. I still like the K-pop music videos are so sick. Yeah. They, they are, are dude. Cool. Which, really which are. shiny song did you write? It just came out on their oh. last album. It's called Sweet Misery. It was, And the oh. funny thing about K-pop is every time I've sat down to write a K-pop song, it never lands. Like Natural. all the girl, <laughs> all the girl rap, like the Espa and like the, I've never had a girl song cut first of all but like yeah. every time i sit down to do a k-pop song and it's like min, 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 like yeah. rapping shit yeah. and it's like it just every time i make a k-pop song in general never goes anywhere but every time we send like some random cool basically just american sounding song that yeah. we made without k-pop in mind it sometimes they, they land. pick it up yeah yeah i think it's because just like it's uh, like in general that industry is starting to move towards more of like that's why i said like i feel like i'm hearing so much more edm crossover now yeah in in the k-pop industry i'm like this is an edm beat or even like with um so like xg for example like uh even they're like very hip hoppy songs i'm like this sounds like it's almost like a hybrid edm hip-hop pop like oh, yeah. beat yeah. you know dude uh i know one of the guys that did the xg i mean i'm actually good friends with one of the guys that made the production for xg song um god what is it called it's one of the shooting star da, 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 da. there's uh, shooting star thank okay, you yeah uh he made the beat for shooting star and that guy's just so sick he's just making like rap he just makes rap shit like he just That's makes sick. he he's like playing rap shows in japan with yeah. his like mm. friends and just like crushing that's it. awesome um <laughs> what a life <laughs> you're kind of you're kind of just following your nose when it comes to like the pr production side of things like in terms of either landing a, a pop gig or or something electronic for your own artist project are you like in, in obviously you're here on this podcast because of the electronic music right. scene specifically so what is mm -hmm. it that you're trying to like add to this community that you don't think is there already um i think that i don't know i think that that's a that's a hard question because like <laughs> there's so much that i want to add to the electronic community and sometimes you feel like it's oversaturated and sometimes i feel like it's oversaturated i feel like um i want to be the artist who hope I'm, I'm guilty of trying to hop on trends like i've tried to make the elenium music i've tried mm -hmm. to make um whatever the heck's cool at the time mm -hmm. but like i really want to be like the art in a perfect world i would love to be the artist like porter robinson who mm -hmm. does not follow the trend he just does, does he makes him. the trend if anything makes the like, trend I thank you don't I can't even describe Porter's John. I just call it Porter. We talked about this yeah. last yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, on the Porter. episode yeah, that we had Jeezy, oh, the shit. first episode we had Jeezy. Dude, yeah. that was last year. I right. Know. It was a year ago. Oh, that's wild. Wow. One thing that I hit recently um, is now that I've, I haven't been releasing very much, um, and whenever I do, and I, I kind of second guess myself for a while. Like, I was making like songs that sounded like Grant. And I'm like every song, and I felt like every new song had to be a new idea, a yeah. new concept. Like I yeah. couldn't, I wanted to. I thought I was being better than people by reusing, by not reusing a lot of stuff. What is it that you're trying to realize, either for yourself or for the community, through through the EDM community, mm -hmm. through your music? Is I guess is mm -hmm. what I'm asking. Also, I actually have a, a thought to add on to that too, because I know you mentioned that um, it's you're not taking it as seriously as you were before. Um, so is it? Is your artist project grant not your main priority? Because I know, um, uh, what was it? Your manager said something about publishing and. Oh yeah. Yeah. So right now I'm. Uh, I would say grant is actually not my main priority. Um, I still. I, I really only release like once a year, um, and that's just because I'm in such a transitional phase of my life, writing music behind the scenes, getting pulled onto bigger projects. Like mm -hmm. I am literally working on music from the moment I wake up until I go to bed most weekdays at least, um, and. I really need to like solidify a lot of these like industry relationships that I have right now that are kind of in their early budding stages. Mm -hmm. And then my plan for life is as my deals start to kind of expire and I am a bit more solidified, I kind of want to pull a Fred again and like just start a, maybe a whole new project or re okay. reinvent the grant project into something that if I had to choose probably wouldn't be quite as much like stadium banger edm mm -hmm. it'd be a bit more like incorporating my songwriting and like weird textures and like i've been moving more towards more organic instruments like guitar and um, mm -hmm. using my voice as like a synth and like doing lots of weird stuff and i kind of want to keep leaning into that almost experimental indie electronic space mm -hmm. um and i have just been do i just do like a ton of like gibberish ideas in my room and like mm -hmm. trying weird ideas uh, most of them never reach conclusion reach a conclusion but um i don't know i guess like if there is there might not be anything i'm trying to add to the scene intentionally my whole life has just kind of been making music 
and hoping that people like fuck with it and it chip, fucks and it, they fuck with it. <laughs> that's hey, that's the important part right? um <laughs> yeah so i mean it's it's definitely just kind of like rolling dice and it's really scary to try anything new at this point because oh, yeah. i've been just making the grant sound or the grant music or the edm drops that i know how to do yeah uh for so long now um it it would really bum me out if like i tried something new and, and nobody, uh, listened. And nobody that's actually, liked it that's yeah. actually a big that's that that idea sits very close to my heart because right. as I try to build my project, the big thing that I want to do is build it from the ground up in a way that shows a bunch of different genres, a bunch of different styles. Yeah. Because personally, I believe that's a more human thing. Absolutely. Yep. Like as people, as artists, artists back in the days of when a label kind of created you, you were made with this image in mind this like this sound specifically and it's interesting to hear that from a big artist such as yourself you say that you're worried to try something new do you think (laughs) that idea hinders the evolution of music in general or is that sort of thing like good just for business um i think it i think it hinders music in general um i think you in a box puts you in a box Uh, but sometimes being in that box is great for your business. It's safe. Yep. It's like yeah. all the biggest, a lot of the biggest artists, uh, yeah. they just make like. Because it's safe and you know that yeah. it works. But yeah. yeah. I also want to jump on that too. This is like, it's also the audience not wanting to let, um, totally. uh, let yes. people grow. Like yes. I can only use Skrillex as a, a very large example. Like, mm-hmm. don't get me wrong. I love old Skrillex. And the fact that I'm even using the term old Skrillex already tells you right now my opinion on it. Like I like his new stuff. But clearly, in my brain, I'm not even saying, oh, it's all Skrillex. Right. I'm still mm-hmm. making that separation of old and new. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I feel the same way with um, with uh, Zed, who was uh, my favorite artist. Yeah. And um, that was, I mean, that that was like a, a really big thing for a long time. You know, when Zed made that transition to doing mostly like pop, like pop EDM songs, you know, mm-hmm. it was like people were like, where's the old Zed? We want like all the old progressive house artists stuff. Just, yeah. oh, He's working on some crazy shit right he now. He is, yeah. man. Um, I love that guy. Yeah, he's dope. Uh yeah so i don't really know what i'm doing or why or if i have a plan or anything it's just kind of like just um just keep experimenting and well it kind of feeds in that that idea or that that feeling feeds into the whole idea that we're talking about where like artists are people right right there's it's rare that you're going to find somebody that wants to make the same thing because it gets boring and repetitive like also it's just normally artists want the unknown they like to experience the intangible and bring it into a real Mm -hmm. thing so if if you're just kind of telling them oh the thing that you already (laughs) discovered you just have to keep doing that over and over again it's not there's no value in that for at least for a lot of artists so like it's it's a good point take take it to another level too with the whole just art art as a whole like you wouldn't ask uh, a writer for a movie, uh, like a TV show, to keep writing the same show forever. You yeah. wouldn't ask a but storyteller the is, but the to say the same they story do, forever. Though, you know what I mean? Like they, especially nowadays with the the content space and all this stuff, people are kind of being forced and pushed into doing the same <coughs> thing over and right, over yeah. again. And if there's anything I would want to use this kind of platform for, it's to tell people to have an open mind and to yeah. let yeah. artists yeah, evolve. You know, if Grant wants to make a let folk, him do whatever the a fuck he folk, wants, a folklore drum and bass acid house mix. Let him like, do it. Yeah. Do it. Can you do that? Like that'd be really cool. <laughs> Folklore acid. Dr- Wait, what was it? Folklore, <laughs> There's a lot of drum and of bass. Acid house. Acid house. Yeah. 80s. 80s. <laughs> 80s bluegrass. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait. 80s um, with a banjo. I am excited for the music AI to generate that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I played like, with the with the music AI a little bit. It's actually really? pretty interesting. I've been yeah. using them for uh, for de- pop demos. Uh, like I'll be like with a bunch of guy songwriters, yeah. and we'll write want to write a song for like a girl k-pop group or something and we'll just like run the voice yeah, through, yeah. like That's the so ariana grande funny. ai or like whatever voice whatever website Dude, that sounds shit's the best. scary i've used ai voice yeah. for some of my videos really? they sound like it it's getting really scary it's getting good <laughs> there are certain websites that are a little, sounding yeah. a little better than others like some there of was like this rihanna song that someone made it sounded like her and it like fucked really good oh but <laughs> <laughs> and it fucked it really fucked good really <laughs> Honestly, it just you know you know how there's a writer strike for, uh, yeah. for the yeah. film industry. This yeah. is, that's gonna happen I for know. the music industry next. Oh, yeah. I, I bet money on it. Well, we need more unions in the music industry before <laughs> honestly shit we do. happens. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, I got a I got a I got a random story that I just feel like I have to tell you because this is also another full circle moment for me Please. with you. Um, I was obsessed with your song "Contagious" Ooh. with Run like back in the day. Thank and, you. Uh, when I, I was in co- so when I was in college, I took a of a speech class and it's uh you have to like what is it, what is it called fuck like you have to speak in front of people 
presentation? No, it's like a, a special class. Speech 101. Public speaking? There you go. Public speaking <laughs> class. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's like dancing around I the like, title. I like brain fart. Um, <laughs> one of my first assignments that my professor told us to do was pick a song and you have mm. to lip sync that song in front of the whole class. I chose Contagion. No way. Dude, that's <laughs> awesome. That's adorable. <laughs> yeah. So can we get a live performance right now? It's pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> I don't good. even know if I can remember all the lyrics. I actually remember the lyrics, but like, no. But um, I was obsessed with that song. When I tell you, I was the, the streams on that song was probably mostly me. Let's go. You know, while I we're on that. while we're on this topic, yeah, I guess we might as well say how Nan and I uh, kind of started listening to your stuff too. I did you already know about him before? Because I know we were we were it was when we were driving across and we heard color. With, yeah, uh, no, oh. J- J- it Juno, was an right? accident. It was an accident. I remember the story. I don't. I don't think I had known. Uh, maybe I did. Maybe I yeah, didn't. It was on I don't Spotify, think I, right? Yeah, we were on Spotify, and I was obsessed with "Don't Care Crown." Yes, uh, yeah, who's that? Fox Stevenson. Stevenson. Fox Stevenson. Don't yeah. Care Crown. And for whatever reason, I had it on radio mode. I never do that. Usually, I have it on my favorite list. Right. Yeah. It was on radio mode. And then the next song was great. And the next song was great. And the next song was great. And me and him just want like <gasps> every oh, the fuck yes. like, who are these people? Like, like, Fifteen, twenty songs in a row. We just. Yo, yeah. this radio station's fucking sick. Yeah, it was, sick. It was like you, it was like half an orange, it was like uh, some other some other people I can't remember at the moment, but you were on the top of the list because yeah, I think yeah. yours yours was the first song that popped up that we were like, whoa, this and is there was a like three good ass song. song. There was yeah. like three grand yeah, songs Yeah, Castaway popped up. also wow. popped up, I believe. Sick. Yeah, so it was, and we were like, damn, this guy, this guy fucks. So <laughs> this like, guy yeah. fucks. Yeah, and then, and then not too long after that, that was back in... <sighs> Oh yeah, a year ago. That September. was literally a year ago. That was September yeah. of last year. Yeah, we went to Cross. When, it was on the way to San Diego, which is ironic because that's where yeah. that's where uh, you grew up, right? So yeah, that's crazy. So I'm like, crazy. who the fuck's listening to my music? When did when did Conta- Contagious came out? Like in 2019. 2019. Yeah. Yeah, that's when I did my class. Spotify knew that <laughs> we were driving to San Diego, and they were like, "Oh, this guy is from San Diego." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like Fruity Grant music, then like a hard trap. I- yeah. ISO XO song. Yeah. <laughs> It's like we were we were very much on that vibe uh, that day, and so because you know that drive is actually I actually kind of like that drive uh, the drive to oh, San yeah. Diego just because it's along the coast right. for so long. So dead men walking. Oh yeah, uh, uh, I'm just I'm yeah. just gonna list the artists because it was such a good ones, right? playlist. Mm-hmm. Um, it was Fox Stevenson, it was Pixel Terra, Grant, um, Oliver's Bishu. Oh yeah, Oliver's Fate. I remember. Faint. Wait, Faint Bishu was, was on there? Bishu was on here. Oh, that's so leaves. funny because they just reached out to us. So. Faint, mm-hmm. me, uh, Slippy, Slushy. Slippy's good. Snaz. Slippy. Slippy. There was so many S, S names. I, I remember the Half an Orange song. The Move s- On s- like was a flamingo. Here. Wow, we have a lot of Grand Songs Oh, let's go. Yeah. Move On was yeah. also in here. It's like the Monster Cat algorithm. But people yeah. do listen to you. Dude, oh, yeah, honestly. but people do listen to you. I'm just saying, Gamma, dude. I made "Are We Still Young" as like my high school senior project. Nice. Wow. And wow. it took like 50 years to put it. That out. was the one. weapon. <laughs> weapon. Weapon. Oh, weapon's good too. Weapon yeah. was one of my favorites. I remember oh, listening dude. to that one on repeat. Wow, dude. Okay, seriously. You, won't guys, give you up. guys don't know There's Contagious. Like Contagious is like here. a fucking bop. Contagious <laughs> is a bop. You don't know Contagious? Contagious is sick. That's I like actually. my favorite grand song. I'm surprised I don't with Run. Yeah. It's a. It's. It fucks. It fucks. It's gonna be like yeah. our new hashtag. For a I'm not. I'm not trying to like, to like you know, stroke your ego here. But like, there's like ten songs on here that we that we all liked. Yeah, people listen to you. I could I could use a little ego boost, low key. I'm pretty pretty hard on myself. So you're a yeah. really great yeah. artist. Thanks, man. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. and we've said this before. Granted, now that I know it's not your main priority, right? We'd still love to see you at a festival. Bro. Oh, yeah. Speaking of which, I, we have fan questions that uh, oh, I ask you about that too. Phone. We should um. <laughs> Yeah, Dude, I really, mean, I, I will say one of the things I miss the most about pursuing the electronic music project to the fullest is playing shows, like mm-hmm. going, performing in front of tons of people. Like I think when I in 2021 I opened for Lenny at Red Rocks, like my whole family came and like <gasps> I literally Why it was like one of the highlights of my you know, entire life. You know, was so I was cool. about to say like, yo, if you just for shits and giggles, like at some point one of our shows because we're throwing a show actually on the oh, 19th. So. If you'd come play, but if you're opening for for Elenium, I'm like, all right, we're too small for you. We're way too small for you to come play for September us. September 19th, uh, August 19th, literally, it's literally this on week. Saturday. <laughs> yeah, we're we're, we're uh, no, but if if you can, are, we can talk. We are can you talk. are you out here? Uh, not, not, like, do you yeah. live out here in, in I live in LA, LA area? Yeah. Oh, okay, dude, come through. We'll be on the guest list. At least a ten. Yeah, just come just come through cool. to like just come hang out. 
dope. My Hell man. yeah. And if, and if uncertainty is any part of you not fully committing to the EDM scene, I think that I would speak for all of us when I say that there's plenty of amazing music that you can create and we would love to have more of it. Yeah. And we would, yes, certainly, sir. And yeah. We would certainly love to see you play some more live. So, Thanks, show, guys. so yeah. if you're unsure, just go for it. Yeah. Especially like experimental music. I, I always enjoy, especially with artists that I already enjoy. Right. Um, when they start experimenting, cause I'm like, yeah. that is you wanting to do what you want to do mm-hmm. now. I'm not saying I'm going to like what you make, but I want to hear it anyway. <laughs> well, sometimes in a way, artists, when they want to experience, uh, experiment on different of their songs, they just do VIPs of like yeah, their songs right. that they have. Yeah. They're like, oh, this is just another version that I had in my head. Sorry. I just, yeah. Uh, I, I just remember a dumb dad joke from yesterday on the way home from the airport. Uh-oh. They were playing a song and the GPS went off and I was like, damn, this is a good VIP though. <laughs> damn, <laughs> that remix though. <laughs> I, I, but I think like there are like, there, there are a lot of people that really enjoy your music. I mean, one of the first questions on here was, um, uh, when is he performing in SoCal again? I, m- I miss him. Yeah. So God, dude, I yeah, don't dude. know. I don't, there's no date. I just need to, I need to get the momentum going. I mean, honestly, I'd never even had a booking agent and I would just play sporadic shows that, yeah. uh, monster cat was super, um, monster cat was nice enough to put me on a bunch of shows like yeah. back in college like i'd fly to china all the time wow. play random shows and that's really cool it was, it was really crazy um especially for me who ha- i had not done a lot of traveling at that point yeah um but yeah man i just miss playing shows i need i need some more uh i think i just need to put out a little bit more music get the momentum going again yeah um and yeah if I ever change like to something more indie electronic, I would really miss DJing though. DJing is just so fun. You just roll yeah. up with your flash drive. I think you can. Yeah, you can still do it. Do, do you listen to Roman Silver at all? We had him on the podcast before. Oh, um, I've definitely heard some of his songs, but I it's been a while. So he he is like another kind of like like artist that is just a lot smaller, but like so talented, just like yourself. Absolutely. And um, like he's finally starting to like get more like you know just a little bit more gigs like here and there yeah. um but i i really think he he's really pushing um uh, i think he's pushing his first uh big album right now which is like amazing so once you like yeah. i think once you like really start getting into putting um yeah more of like your own music out there yeah. i think like you have the capacity to do it you know there are a lot of edm albums coming out yeah oh, yeah like a lot i think for i better think it's better because worse. I think it's because we we've gotten so much so many singles in the recent couple of years yeah. ever since yeah. 2020. Yes. Um so everyone's trying to go back on that like I don't want to use the word trend but right. you know albums like like give us a full right. fucking album. Yeah, I'm like, tired of waiting months and yeah. months for And it's songs. like I uh, this is what I mean by like we want full stories again. Yeah. Exactly. You know yeah. like attention spans were short and they still are but like there is the beauty of a full story. Like right. what we talked about with Odessa, like a yeah. full story cinematic experience. Yeah. 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 I think there's like Ascend this... album. Yeah. What? Oh yeah. Millennium's Ascend album. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I was um I was talking to Jason Ross actually. He's like my neighbor. Whoa! <laughs> uh, Whoa. Yeah, he's my neighbor. He like lives down the street. And, that's uh, funny. So cool. We also just walking man. my dog. Like, yeah. You know, why is your grass um, still green? Are you watering yeah. it? <laughs> um, but anyways, I was just talking to him at some show, and well, like I think the album thing also comes from like people wanting to ha- do it. like people get a bit of a bigger budget too to like promote their album, then they can oh, go yeah. on tour and like mm. they can really do like a bigger thing around the album. So it could be like some people are trying to hop on that as well as telling the the more you know yeah fleshed out story yeah. um yeah also something about releasing an album feels a little bit more special you know? Absolutely. it's like if, as an artist if you're saying oh yo i'm releasing an album as yeah. opposed to this three minute song you're gonna 100%. you're assuming that the artist took way more care in developing right. an art- oh, yeah. Yeah. Tears, album bro. Yeah, exactly. oh, yeah. Yeah. so i'd be so nervous to drop an album yeah. i literally yeah like, well we're gonna be big happen. fans i mean we're, we're kind of so. waiting for it <laughs> i hope so uh, I take that not, back. We're not, not to kind you. of waiting. We no, are waiting. Pressuring. Sorry, no pressure though. But no, we're pressuring. <laughs> I definitely have like albums worth of like song starts that I. Just <laughs> there you go. So we're should. gonna ask for okay. one more song from you too, but before yeah, sure. we end the episode, yeah. can I, there's, can I, there's oh. this a uh, Frank Ferris ask. Okay, I don't know if you'll get this, but he says how to make that one sound four bars into the intro of Weapon. Please, you know the one I'm talking about. <laughs> you know the one. one. You know what I'm was, talking about. I was literally about. about to ask that question too. Uh, I like that question. I was trying to figure out what he was saying. Four Gee. bars into the intro of Weapon. Um, that dun 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 dun. dun that thing is a sample, I believe, that I play. I just like put in the MIDI for it. 
I don't actually know exactly which sound. This is the problem with my my music is people ask me how I made X Y Z sound, like, uh, and I'm like, I don't know. It's just a random chain of effects yeah. that I yeah. automated randomly. Totally. And like one thing I'll do when I'm making when I'm trying to get inspired to make a song a song or a sound is like sound design is one of the things that inspires me the most. Yeah. And mm-hmm. sometimes instead of just loading up a serum patch, I'll a lot of good things happen by accident. A too. lot of good things yeah. happen by accident. I will put in like a full effects chain. I'll automate like a million things turning on and off randomly yeah. before I even start playing anything into it and then sometimes like weird things will happen like, yeah oh, that fuck. that's yeah. what I heard that flume uh, like flume would do is that he would just do um, a random sound generator mm-hmm. and then yeah. he would um, he would have like a bunch of sounds like just generated into the track and then he would just move them mm. like move them into spots that sounds like something he would do yeah yeah fun, uh, fun fact and I, I've mentioned this before back in 2020 I took advantage of that time and actually went uh, and took a production class Ooh. just because I wanted to learn not to like necessarily make music but like to enjoy it you know yeah and I learned I love sound design. I it's really so do. Fun. Um, and I, I, one of the courses that we took was like you had to use a, a physical, like an analog device or something oh, like okay. that. So it was always fun to like plug in this oscillator and just like play around with it, like actually That's fuck sick. with it. Because uh, like obviously the, the digital ones are great, right. but having that physical thing be like, <laughs> was just yeah. so fun. And it was just like, play around with it as much as you can until you can tweak something that you're feeling in that moment. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you could teach me something about that because I don't know anything. I'm still like just a plug-in dude. Uh, <laughs> oh, don't get me wrong. I prefer the plugins. I prefer, it's just being That's able to play though. with it that one time was really cool. Yeah. And yeah. like getting every time I've had the opportunity to play with some of these devices, I don't really make anything. I just think it's fun to like instead of having to click i just right. make bleep bloop noises I, bleep, bleep, bleep. well sometimes it's bleep bloop but sometimes it's zzz, zzz. sometimes yeah. it's grr, and then you're <laughs> plugging in the cable like and it's just yeah. 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 yeah it's that sometimes like static just, noise <laughs> no it and actually sometimes is. nothing's even plugged Yo, in so that just straight, straight, up, it does shoot. <laughs> straight up though it actually it, it like for at least for the device i had it was straight up static noise right. depending on how yeah. many how many like i think you're talking about like a modular synthesis yeah. Rack. yes yeah yes yeah with all the cables and stuff no no, no, no. Oh, I just one plug no. into my computer and there's the... Oh, then, ah. okay, no. Yeah. Love knobs and twisties <laughs> and... Yeah. Yeah. You don't remember what synth it was? Uh, m- Mode? M- Mog? Oh, Moog? Moog? Moog! Yeah, okay. That one. The monophonic one? It was one. orange. Oh, it's like the tiny one. Yes. I forgot what that's called. The mini Moog, I think. Yeah. Say Mini Moog. Yeah. <laughs> Exo, Exo Rin XX asks, what's an inspirational <laughs> quote that has always stuck by you and why? Heart, heart, heart. Oh, God. I don't know. That's a hard one. I don't really like read. I don't really read. I, I you know really what? see inspirational quotes. I, it's probably I a Rick fucking Rubin resonate thing. with you on that one. It's probably a Rick Rubin quote that I read on Instagram, oh, but okay, I've forgotten nice. already. Nice. Um, I, do miss, I do miss reading. Fun fact. Inspiring. Oh, me too. I have my book arrow and start reading Let's again. Go. Can't, can't, I, it's, hard, it's hard for me to read a book unless unless it's like something I really like enjoy or I really fuck with. It's really hard for I'm I'm just such a visual mm-hmm. I'm such right. a visual learner, you know. Well that's the thing too. Or audio I, learner. That's the thing too. For me, because uh, I say this because I really used to enjoy reading books. It's just the time. Because yeah. now I feel like I have so much on my plate and things to do that I can't just do the one thing. Reading is a very, you, that's all you can do. Yeah. You yeah. can try to listen to music at the same time, but it's difficult. And then also like, uh, every, like these guys know, I'm a very imaginative person and visual mm-hmm. person as well. So when I read, I can really see it all in my head. Mm-hmm. But then that's the thing. I'm so focused in that story, I can't do anything else. Right. See, I read one line and then I have to go back and read it again because I'm like, Dude, what did same. I just read? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. What did I just? I'm a like thinking movie, about something else. I'm a whole like, movie plays in my head when yeah. I. Read. Yeah. Yes. See, that's how I am now. It wasn't always like that. Mm. It was actually practiced because I was yeah. I was I was terrible reader practice. growing up. It's a practice, but it definitely became a practice of like learning how can I read this in a way so that I can really create this story and right. imagine it in my head. Yeah. Because if I and it, obviously if I actually got to really start this from the beginning, and mm. then if I put this book down for too long, I've already forgotten all those things, so I can't restart mm. the book. You guys, right. of, you guys heard of beat bionic reading? What what that is, that? It's like the it's a style of writing where I think you you bold and like highlight the first and oh, last letter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I, I know think, exactly what you're talking about. And it just about. allows you to like read faster. Wow. Yep. Oh. I think it's called bionic reading. Somebody checked yeah. on that. But it's, yeah, it's actually pretty cool. cool. I heard I heard it's uh it was developed specifically for like people with ADHD because their brain mm. will see that first bold letter giving them yeah. that that attention they need and then 
they're not actually it's like it's speed reading you don't mm. read the word you just know what that word means and your <laughs> brain doesn't skip over all the other words because every mm. first letter is brain well it, right. it's funny because i i grew <laughs> brain up hacks. i grew up reading like I, I i my parents were making me read books when i was like five like i started i started reading the harry potter series like right when it came out right like back when i was like, i was like six years old and and i ended up yeah i ended up reading all the books i uh i was constantly like reading my dad would even dude i was like when i was like 10 my dad would bring me to his work and instead of like i would get like maybe one hour to play video games on my game boy like i, I would get like, one hour to play pokemon on my yeah. game boy and wow, then he'd be like boys. and then he'd be like i want you to read this article and i want you to write a summary on that for me and I would have to like write a su- I would have to read the article and write a summary and so they would make me do that and so I grew up like reading but I think the older I got and the more I was introduced to like visual and like audio stimuli right. I think I just prefer it so much more so if I'm going to read a book I would like so much prefer to like hear an like, audio audio book yeah like yeah. that I can actually absorb when someone mm-hmm. is telling me something or someone is showing me something it's way easier for me to like mm-hmm. envision it I agree. but I just it's so hard for me to stay focused on like stuff like it was so difficult for me to like study in college right you know it, I just never re- would retain anything unless I was like on Adderall <laughs> so I need to listen I, to music I just I, I mean I, I told you guys before I was I had music therapy so like Ooh. for me definitely audio was a very very uh, great way for me to learn and I just want to jump on that story too uh Game Boy Pokemon all that uh I didn't even get an hour you know what I got <laughs> like it was it was literally in a lockbox we oh weren't allowed God. to play any video games unless it was like a three-day weekend or a holiday no or way. like wow. spring break winter break whatever um so but because of that it was just like I always focused on my work but visual learning and audio learning was a lot and yeah. uh I I don't want to say I was cheating in class, but this is what I would do. I would have headphones and I would record. I would record mm. my teachers. Um, and the thing is, it was cheating in like French class because they want you to hear it once and then remember. <laughs> right. But I would record classes and then I would go back home and listen mm-hmm. because, well, I already missed, I missed something in class. I probably wasn't even paying attention. Like I was looking, but I'm not looking at you. I'm looking at the chipped tooth you have and why, where, where, yeah. why, where and why you might have a chipped tooth. Yeah. And like, you know, like visually just creating a new story in my head about what's going on in this reality i had that in high school too yeah don't look at my chip tooth <laughs> well, I, I, well the thing is you've already told me you've already told me the whole story so i, I know exactly yeah. yeah okay good i get what you mean though I, I i just remember in bio in high school um like during like reading the lessons and everything um during class was always very difficult i was also in like ap classes so like mm-hmm. they you have to learn so much more in a shorter period of time mm-hmm. but we had uh there was this was back when youtube was like in its prime oh, yeah. right. and there green, was this guy the green arrow no there was this guy bozeman biology i will oh, never oh, forget it lessons i for some fucking reason bro i would retain every it's piece just the of way information he's, I don't, the Both way in he, biology you fucks yeah you <laughs> fucks. also um oh i can't remember the channel but there was one for calculus also <laughs> okay i did um, not it, take calculus uh, fuck, fuck what that. was it called <laughs> yeah it's gonna bother me so much but there was this guy also uh had a, his own channel where he taught calculus and that oh. is where I learned how to like do all my calculus stuff because I would fall asleep in calculus class. Ew, math. Mm. Was and it Khan Academy? Khan Academy. Oh, no, no, it was not a Khan. It was not Khan. Use Khan Academy, but yeah. not for that. Okay. It was like it was like uh, eight H H G stats. Oh. Okay. You know what? It's gonna bother. I, him. I'm gonna bother. It's gonna bother me, so I'm gonna look it up. But <laughs> sorry. I don't know how we went on that tangent. I I I went on, like, uh, I tried to get it back into reading, but it was with, like, self-help books and, like, trying to, like, fix myself and, like, be get it into, like, the kind of, like, toxic productivity vibe of life and, like, just... Anyways, I hate self-help books. I don't think I'm ever going to read anymore. <laughs> like, cause like they made me hate reading. Like I would never finish mm. a book. I would only get halfway and then mm. I would like burn out on it. I feel like, mm. and I've actually talked to a lot of friends about this because uh, I don't enjoy self-help books either. Yeah. But there's certain good ones, but. But that's the thing. It's reading the whole thing is the problem. I yeah. feel like when you read a self-help book, if you try to use that as your Bible and make it your everything, yeah. it's just not going to work out for you. Yeah. Self-help books are meant to be, in my opinion, more of a guide to yeah. help you get to a place that you agree with. Like there might be certain things you're like, I agree with the fuck out of this. Right. And there might be other parts where like, I don't know if this is a hundred percent how I feel or how I think about this particular thing. Right. Or maybe you're just not ready to hear it. Cause let's be real here. Self-help books. Sometimes you're just not ready to hear certain things that that is trying to, trying to yeah. tell you. Mm-hmm. As long as you understand in, in music or in any, art form any business really like the idea 
how you achieve success is to fix your mind, right? Yeah. To yeah. get yourself in the proper mindset. So if, also, you, if you see a book that yeah. can do that for you, then it's going to be helpful. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I actually agree with that. And I, I, I'll take a step further too, not just music, all art in general. Right. All art for everybody is 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 you pushed out. You mm-hmm. know, right. it's your own expression. So self-help books and... Well, sometimes um, people don't like things telling them what to do. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, I, I is don't. it telling you what to do? You're the one reading the book. That's right. true. Well, so that's that's what it's that's what I'm referring to is the idea that like if you read the book and you don't know that why you're reading it is to try to fix your mind to unlock your full potential. Yeah. If you don't know that that's the reason, then the self help book probably isn't going to help. Oh yeah, I will help. say it's not going to help you very much. If someone recommends you a self help book, uh, I've done that. Hey, man, so, you would you, would you try? Help. Why would you try to tell me? Uh, huh? Yeah, I have recommended a self help book to someone before, and uh, the response was not the best. Really? Yeah, and I, I really I mean, need some help. That kind of makes sense, though. So. Yeah. yeah, but like, you need help. But here's the thing: at the time, I was reading the book, and it wasn't like, "Hey, you it was like need a recommendation." This. Like, I'm recommending this book because I'm reading it right now, and some of the stuff that I've been struggling with, you're literally struggling with right, right. now. Yeah, some people don't like being faced with their problems. Yeah. Oh, you mean some? You mean a lot? Oh, sure. A lot. Damn. A lot sure. of. Last week it was the ADHD podcast. This week it's a, a wow. <laughs> self-care podcast. What's next? Hey, we like to talk about things that are real. You, you know? know, I actually, wow. I agree with that. I do like to talk about mental health a lot because I think it's important in being able to like, you know, be an art, 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 be an art, be an artist. Like yeah. Yeah. everything is, you know, again, you pushed out and yeah. I can speak that as like a, as an actor or formerly an actor because i don't really want to do that anymore but um you gotta have like some serious self self like understanding yeah to, to be able to like really yeah. you know step into this character live this life absolutely think in this way you or know just to change as an individual mm-hmm. yes because mm-hmm. change is constant yeah also yeah. that channel was patrick jmt okay. by the way mm-hmm. got me through all my all my pre-calculus and calculus shout classes out pat. shout out pat. Patty. Like one, pat shout out young pat oh, there was someone there was someone who said this in the ray Vel- ray volpe episode as a comment um who is a teacher and they are also a raver oh, and i saw were, the comment yeah and they really wanted I, i'm so sorry if i don't remember your name but um they wanted to like point out say thank you to your teachers the ones that actually meant something because it does mean a lot mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. we're out here still doing the thing so thank you to those teachers who do believe in us and you know put their foot out and gave us a gave us a break when they could see like yo this ain't your thing but there is a thing yeah um on, <laughs> on that thought though uh have you ever had like any any inspiring teachers or any teachers that like you feel have had a big impact on your life to um at least in the course of your career um like school teachers could be school teachers could be a tutor mentor um yes i i think a lot of my i went to school to study music as i mentioned like Mm -hmm. um i came in there thinking that i knew everything i had been making a lot of electronic music uh beforehand at least in that realm i was a bit more advanced than some people uh i kind of came in with a bit of an ego and i think my i had some professors that were pretty wise uh they basically just said like when you leave school like it's not about what you know it's about knowing what you don't know yeah um and that just, i think over time i just kind of like got into this headspace of like i thought i knew everything but actually i don't know anything at all um and just i think it, they just started to, a lot of my school professors just opened my mind up a little bit to uh I, I had never even like collaborated with anybody like they started i started like learning about song form and um mm. just thinking about music in a different way than just some some kid who's just sitting in his bedroom like mm. making instrumental electronic music yeah um, and i wish i could remember everything that they said to me in school but like i mean there's a lot there, there there are definitely a lot of reasons why not to go to music school but you just never know like the teachers might tr- if you wanted to do that like your teachers might kind of expand your horizons and make mm-hmm. you think about things in a different way and then yeah. like if you had never had those conversations you never know where you would be like yeah. you know it's just really hard to know so um but i i will also say that like just listening to a lot of music and electronic music and watching like i feel like my biggest two, my biggest mentors were just like youtube people oh, <laughs> yeah. YouTube, YouTube university, university. YouTube university yeah. dude we, so we really are in the generation where like you can learn anything on yeah. YouTube. Like I've learned so much shit from TikTok, bro. Yeah. Uh, this is a so random, much. random skill. Uh, you know, blowing fire like literal flames out of your mouth. I learned that from YouTube. 
Yeah, Whoa. I learned to dance off of YouTube. Yeah. That's how oh, I, I, would dan- I danced yeah. for 12 years, no like pop, popping and stuff. Yep. And I learned yeah, off of YouTube. Popping. You're sick. Yeah, like I, I, this, I didn't even know about the Jabberwockies or anything when I started oh, dancing. I learned because uh, Poriotics had just won season five of America's Best Dance Crew. I miss that and, show. And they were in r- one of Ryan Higa's videos, mm-hmm. and I used to watch YouTube religiously. Yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. it, was Ryan, it was a Ryan wow. Higa and Catch Up video. They were they did the video together, and they were like Best Crew or whatever. And then I remember it. Then <gasps> Poriotics comes in. And they like show him up, and I was like, I have never seen this style of dance. Can I just ever. give it up for that era of YouTube? Absolutely, great oh, era. And so I, I started watching this tutorials got oversaturated yeah. religiously. And so, and I remember, I mean, in high school, I was I was terrible. All my friends told me to stop, and then uh, a year later, I just everything just clicked all of a sudden and i was like doing like co- competitions at school and stuff and i was like winning them and Hell so yeah. yeah and so it was like but yeah you really like there's so much stuff that you can learn we had a chill on um mm-hmm. on the podcast oh, uh cool. maybe like five or six episodes ago and she said that up until she went to icon she learned like everything off of youtube yeah it's crazy yeah you were talking you were talking about that like y- youtube was a big mentor of yours you were learning a lot of stuff and i think that like a lot of people who are trying to break into the music scene as a producer specifically that are trying to make their money you're at a point right now where like you pay your bills doing the music stuff and you've gone through these mindset shifts of like i know everything to now i know that i don't know anything absolutely in terms of somebody watching this that may not be anywhere close to getting to the point where they're a paid producer in full what is the best piece of like advice that you can consolidate from all the knowledge that you've gained over the years? Oh God. Just in a doesn't have doesn't have to be super profound, but like what's one aspect of your journey that would help somebody earlier on in their journey? Yeah. Even if it's simple cuz it might be simple to doesn't you. Doesn't have but... to be the most profound advice ever, but like what what is an anecdote that you might have? Yeah. It needs to be enjoyable and you need to do it every single day. Mm. Um, yeah. a little bit every single day. It doesn't matter. You don't have to like make it into like I need to finish a song in a day. It doesn't need, it needs to just be something where it's you, like second nature. Yeah. It should become eventually second nature. You have to get over the hump first of mm-hmm. the software. And yeah. like, if you want to be a producer, at least you got to get over the technological, like just getting it to the point where it no longer impedes your creativity. Um, and then eventually once, I think once you get past that hump, music becomes a little bit more fun. You're not struggling as much to get your ideas down. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would say like the YouTube resources are so much better than I was when I was learning how to produce. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, YouTube tutorials can be kind of become this sort of sense of false productivity. Like you're just going down this rabbit hole of like yeah. a million plugins, yeah. a million things. Yeah. Another funny saying that I don't know where I first heard it, but it's like, it's not the gear. It's the ear. It's not about buying a bunch of gear or a bunch of plugins. <laughs> like you don't need that much at the end of the day. You don't need to be dropping fat racks to feel to feel like you're a real producer. Um, But I would just say, make it a consistent practice. Um, Be willing to make some bad music in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But as long as it's fun and you're enjoying it, and that's all that matters because you're yeah. going to keep doing it. And once, if you start putting all this pressure on yourself, it's not going to be fun anymore. Yeah. You know, it feels I, like a chore. I, I, could, I could honestly say the same about like just being a creator Absolutely. and just content in general. Yeah. Like you just got to get past the tool. Like at the end mm-hmm. of the day, the DAW itself or TikTok or Instagram or whatever film thing that we use, it's a tool. Once you get used to it, then you can focus on the art. Yeah, and, absolutely. And music's the art, the the content, <laughs> the art, the, the film. Nothing kills the vibe of trying to make a Teletubby remix, like not being able to know how to put it into your doll. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, yeah. like yeah. you want to give it that cook, cook, cook it sound, but you're just like, how do, I, how do I get Tinky Winky to do that right now? <laughs> Tinky Winky. I'm going to take it a step further with that. Like that's, that's kind of, that. it's so funny that you like say it like that because that just makes me think of like my uh, journey as a video editor mm. and um, like in the, you know, 10, plus years I've been doing it because I started video editing in high school um, it's been like such a crazy journey of like uh, like thinking you know all this or learning the thing at first then thinking you know everything then There's learning you don't so actually know more. everything then learning oh wait like all of a sudden this is like way easier for me to like achieve the thing that it is that I want to do. Right. I remember the first year the first year I started making content, the, before I was even making like rave rave skits or rave comedy whatever, we were just making um, regular comedy videos and I remember um, we were meeting every weekend, we were shooting these videos and each video I would try to experiment with like making the story or whatever the 
joke was that I was making, I wanted to make it um, associated with like an effect. So mm. like I would do like, you know what, this week I want to do like a flashback effect <coughs> and I want to have a flashback in my in my video. Right. Or like this week I want to like try, uh, I can't remember at the top of my head some of the other things that I tried, but um, blur there was effect. like a video. Motion blur. Yeah, there was a video where I added like anime effects onto it and like mm, made right. it like a Yugi, it was like a Yu-Gi-Oh inspired thing. And so they, granted they weren't done very well, but like it, it was, you know, <laughs> it was like, practice. yeah, but it was right. like, I, you know what, it had I, you know, in the first two, three years that I started doing that, even in college when I was literally majoring in it, I like would not have really, it would have taken me forever to do those things. Right. And then I figured out like the best ways to like go about doing them. And, and by then it was like second nature. And so I can, right. I can completely resonate with what you're saying on that. Yeah. I think that like what you just said kind of reminded me of, um, you should be watching and learning but you should also be implementing these things or yeah. else they're just going to be passing passing things that you watched and you're yeah. never going to actually build them into your being and like yeah. uh, your muscle memory. So, um, but it sounds like you, f you did a really good job of finding a fun way to actually practice uh, the, the skill, which I think is... Yeah underrated it's one of the few reasons i'm able to edit this podcast and not ever get tired of it so <laughs> it's worked out in my favor yeah also <laughs> one other thing for music producers if you're trying to become one is just it doesn't matter what doll you're using there's so much obsession with oh, oh yeah, yeah. always gotta buy the Fruity most Loops. expensive yeah like i mean dude i've been having people tell me for years to try and learn ableton and i've been using fruity loops for 15 years i'm probably the only pop producer who's like <laughs> crushing it in fruity loops like it's True. big it's big in rap music but i don't know a lot of uh I, i've never met another pop producer and and who uses it yeah. also everyone comes into sessions with me and they're like what program is that and i'm like <laughs> Fruity Loops, bro. <laughs> um, and so it, it really just comes down to just whatever you are, whatever you're fast at and whatever you're good at and just like trying... Um just, uh, you know, yeah, it's not the gear, it's the ear, I guess, again. Yeah, I mean, yep. you know, it's just like Windows versus, you know, Mac. Right. It's like, yeah. Uh, versus Apple, you know, it's like they both have their strengths and weaknesses. So right. I just the, wish they would have chosen the, a better name. All the tools, <laughs> all the tools can do the same thing. Yeah. It really is just about how much fun you're having with it. And it's like you, you see something you like, maybe an effect or a sound that you like. Yeah. I remember hearing a typewriter in a song and being like, I want to do that. Yeah. And right. so it inspires an entire song yeah. out of it. whether yeah, or not it's good sick. or not. You just take the idea and you do something with mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think on that note, we should listen to another song. Sure. Yes, sir. Yeah, I have some. Um, I'm going to unplug this really quick so that it uh, doesn't just start playing. Oh, <laughs> Epis mid song. Hey, that's all right. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. So, yeah, I mean, um, I was struggling to think about what second song I want to play, but this is a song that I started with Blank who is an Ooh. artist you might know. Okay. Um, I wonder who yeah. that is. Yeah, he's dope. He's we really talk about cool. him all the time. So. Oh, really? No, yeah. Oh, sick. Yeah. Uh, we, this we're, song, big, we're big blank fans name. here. Dude, I literally thought, like we started the song like, probably a year and a half ago. It's like a melodic bass one, one for type Mickey. vibe. And we still got to finish go. it. You're, Let's you're, go. He's only ever heard my joke. <laughs> Let's go. What? What was the joke? <laughs> she said she's blanking on his name. Uh, oh. Uh. <laughs> Nikki one, Devin one, Dan no, one. Come on, guys. Let's you go. guys gotta kind of wow. keep up here. Keep up with the dad jokes I'm here. I'm so impressed. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the vocalist on this song is your friend Polly. She's a close songwriter collaborator of mine. Oh, cool. Um, and yeah, I'm just gonna play half of this because Let's it, do it. needs a lot of work. I went like. Let's see some good Nan facials here. I love female vocals. I tell myself that I'm just dreaming. I'm just dreaming. She does have a really good voice. Wow. Yeah, I love her voice. It's a very, very ethereal voice. Let me hold 
I yeah. love those little breaks wow. you add in there. Thanks, man. It's so cool. Yeah, the like I try to do the Illenium style yeah. a lot. Um, just because when I look at electronic music and I think about what kind of electro like melodic styles are still cool and prevalent and aren't house music, uh, <laughs> just I don't want to make house music. I just don't want to make Sorry, Grayson. Um, Sorry. Hey, I like all kinds of genres. No, I, I literally love house music. I just I don't know why I just don't make it. Um, and uh, so I guess with that song, I was like. I don't know. We'll see. I just sent the stems back to blank yesterday. Wow. Um, which was funny because I knew I was going to play it on this podcast and we hadn't talked about it in like a year. And he hit me about a blue out of the blue. And he's like, where are the stems? It's <laughs> like, oh, you oh, we're just yeah. Yeah. No, we're yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so where are the stems at? <laughs> where are the stems? Um, and I was like, but anyways, I, I think it's like, it's definitely a genre where like the melodic bass genre is like definitely a tricky one to kind of do something new in. It feels yeah. like a lot of it has already been said and done. And yeah. personally, I, I hear I hear a lot of that music is kind of a little too similar. But um, so, yeah, I guess all those little breaks and blips and blops make it a little bit harder to head yeah. bang and like find the one and the downbeat. Stuff, I'm ready to adds, cry bang. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like that. that's adding that like that kind of future bass, uh, you know, little vibe in there yeah. which i really it makes enjoy it, i'm just trying to do something a little bit different i don't know if that's that different but like another fun fact about that in a lot of my songs is like the da, 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 yeah. like the melody is like just uh it's just me it's just my voice i'll just layer it and it kind of sounds like a synth and i just started oh, doing that's wow. that. so cool yeah, it's, it's a really fun way to using my voice as a synth or mangling it into some sort of weird sound has become one of my favorite things to do uh in music because i get to just start a preliminary idea and sit there and just like go crazy with the auto tune and stuff until i come up with an idea Whoa. and it also kind of adds that like vocal element to the song even yeah. though it's an edm That's song really cool. it feels like there's a voice there kind of so yeah yeah you're definitely the first i've heard that from yeah which is yeah, it's super cool <laughs> yeah i try not to tell people but here we are on the podcast oh my god nope. don't now everybody's gonna find everybody knows now. <laughs> secrets we're gonna hear secrets all the grant out. sound alikes now <laughs> um but yeah yeah. Wow. Well, Excited. yeah. With that, um, actually, uh, the cameras are about to die. No. This camera is about to uh, run out of space. So, um, but I think it's a great. I think this is a great um, part to like close it out on. Um, thank you so much for coming thank on. Plug in yeah. yeah. so anything yeah, that's what? like coming oh. up for you. Yeah. Tell the people what you got coming up. Um, you will hear from me one day. Right now, I'm just <laughs> mostly. I'm mostly just trying to write all the pop hits and like yeah. get the money and get and build my relationships <laughs> and important. things. Yeah. Which are really important. it's really important for me right now. But I know I'm gonna start trickling out these songs pretty soon and hopefully get you a a actually thought out. Grant. grant project that feels like me and is is the thing that I've always wanted to do. But next just event. Taking time. Next just event. Taking yeah. time. We're, we're, gra we're grabbing down. him for our next event. Hell yeah, yeah. dude. Put me, I, I mean, I if this is the version play. of Grant that isn't thought out, then I'm, yeah. I'm sure we're Yeah, dude, yeah. Yeah, I know. This That's isn't a, even your final form yet, yeah. dude. <laughs> <laughs> He's like a Pokemon. He used to get into his final form. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah I, I was thinking like Dragon Ball, but... Okay, it's, that works. It's just so funny to me because you said it so softly. You weren't even sure about what you were saying, but you were saying it. And it was like, He's in his final form. Because he's like, Misa evolved from like Pokemon. Pokemon. <laughs> You tr you were trying. I could see it. So, but what are some? Um, do you have any like other uh, singles coming out this year that you know of for sure? Or um, nothing that I can say for sure. I definitely am probably gonna try and drop that drum and bass song, the Hell first yeah. one that I played. Oh. I've, I've just I think been sitting on that Rainbow one forever. Road, I'm just saying that would be sick. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely gonna try and drop that one probably very soon because like I don't think it's gonna fit into any larger project. I just want it out there. Like I yeah. love, I love that song so much. It's so Hell fun yeah. and weird and whatever. Um, so that one's probably gonna drop. We'll see when Blank fin finishes up the remix, and then I'm just like messing around with a bunch of other ideas in the meantime. So yeah, I'm pretty slow at finishing things because I just overthink okay. everything. But yeah, you're we'll working on so many different projects. Whatever you're doing yeah. is working. So. Yeah, we, we prefer so, yeah. quality over quantity. Yeah, anyways, thank you. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, but thank you guys. This was genuinely this is my first podcast I've ever been on. Hell this really? Yeah. This is your first one. First one. This was podcast was virginity really taken. Nervous, <laughs> I'm glad. I mean, I'm glad you were you were able to be on this one, and we can make it like hopefully as fun and yeah. inclusive as possible. Absolutely. Like, we yeah. do. Even though it was like interview at times, we try to For sure. like turn shy away from that because like. Well, yeah, this isn't an interview podcast, guys. This is the I'm Peaking podcast. It's a bunch of friends hanging out. Hey. I just oh, talking hey. about our community. Dude, I yeah. love this community. I love that you're a part of this community, Thanks. and I love that uh, we get to talk about it. Yeah. yeah. Patreons. 
Yeah, um, if you haven't already um, subscribed to the channel, please um, do that. If you enjoyed this episode, uh, leave do a like, it. leave a comment, uh, share the do video. It. And yes, we have a Patreon. If you would like um, other ways to support us, um, joining the Patreon really does help us a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to go ahead and put all our patrons' names on screen now like while, I'm, while I'm talking. <laughs> like oh, you have to say it for <laughs> Brent, huh? <laughs> but Brent. If, if you didn't already know, we drop bonus episodes on the Patreon. Um, we also have a Discord. Um, we also also do call-ins um, if you're in a certain tier uh, we are implementing call-ins into our uh, four four core episodes now um, so you have that to look forward to we have some exclusive playlists on the patreon as well um, and we're thinking of a bunch we're always thinking of like more content we could drop on the patreon if anyone has any suggestions for more content that you want to see from us let us know we'll make it happen um, but yeah go check that out if you haven't already um, and I'm gonna take everyone's names off screen now and um, yeah, oh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank I've you. been Devin. I'm Mickey. I'm Grant. I'm Nan. I'm G Zoom. <laughs> and we'll see you guys in two weeks. Bye. We might be in this new studio next time too. By oh, the way, yeah, we're moving. We don't studios. know yet. We don't know. Yeah. So and for, um, the, for, for the record, um, that is the main reason why we have uh, our Patreon. We're putting stuff on there, but our studio has been our main focus to make sure that we get that taken care of and all that stuff. So. Please trust, go, trust. Go e and go easy on us because it's probably not going to look as nice as this like yeah. studio that we have now. But, um, but we're working on it and we're going to get a lot of things. A lot of things are happening. It's just we're in the beginning. Phase. Just bear with us through this growth period. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Right, bye. See you in two weeks. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, the workflow.